we definitely reiterated the fact of where we're at in the season and you know what's coming up ahead of us and that you know it's now or never. We know we can't tie anymore, we can't lose any. We gotta win them all from here on out. McConnell in the right circle takes a shot, he scores! A fire scores! Jacob St. Andre! We're, we're battling for our nationals right now. These are all playoff games in my mind. Scores! Looking for a pass. He'll work to the high slot. Let a shot go. Scores! Spread in margin! The captain wins it all the time! Hey, that was a big win. Now we gotta show up tomorrow. Tomorrow's a bigger game. All right, tomorrow's the bigger game. Three games left to go in the Chippewas regular season and ranked at number six in the nation. They are looking at a national tournament berth and a chance to move up in the MCHC standings before tournament play. But to get there, they have to go through one of their biggest rivals, the number nine ranked Michigan Wolverines. Hello everybody, welcome inside the broadcast perch here from Martin Ice Arena. I'm Devin Serra, joined with Reagan Cleves as always. And Reagan, the Chippewas are getting ready to play three games in three days with the start of Michigan and Lawrence Tech coming up. And I'll tell you what, after that thrilling overtime victory in Canton, the Chippewas have to be fired up coming into this marquee they, matchup. They certainly do have to be fired up, and especially since, their, since before uh, that last game against Michigan, they had tied every game they had been in overtime, and that was good for five ties, and especially getting that win, I know it was a frustrated feeling for the Chippewas after all those ties. There is definitely a good feeling on the bus coming home after that one. Absolutely, and we'll talk all about this game and more coming up in the pregame show, but first we'll take you to our recap of Tuesday night back in Canton where the Chippewas won 4-3 in overtime over the University of Michigan Wolverines. When we start in the first period, 5-15 in, it was Jordan Cooper scoring on a rebound from Hayden Flynn to put the Chippewas up one nothing. Oh, yeah, now Cooper right in front scores. Jordan Cooper buries a rebound in the mid slot, and the Chippewas, just five minutes and fifteen seconds into the first period, have a one nothing lead. Reagan, you want to talk about timely? That was the first shot of the game for the Chippewas. The Chippewas on their second shot of the game would score again just two minutes later where it was Hayden Flynn scoring again from Justin McComas and Kosnick for his second point of the night and his first goal of the night. Right here. Here. Feeds it out in front for Flynn. Flynn in scores! Hayden Flynn! A beautiful goal from the fourth liner! And a beautiful one-touch pass there by Justin McComas to enter the zone. And the hometown boy gets an assist on the goal that puts the Chippewas up by two. Two goals on two Chippewa shots. The Wolverines would not go away, however, as seven minutes later, it was Logan Gar getting the Wolverines back on the board from Cumming and Newton to make it a two-to-one game with just six left in the period. Will pick it up again, working free to the high slot, works around the defense, works in a shot, score! What a goal and a single-handed effort by Logan Gare, firing it by low glove on Thomas Rofe, and it's 2-1. Michigan getting one goal effort. back. What a great effort by Logan Gar there to get to the front of the net, picked up his own rebound after Rofe made an initial save, and Logan Gar, one of the best forwards for this about halfway through that second period, Ben Reichuk would be whistled off for a controversial tripping call that would put the Michigan Wolverines on a short five-on-three power play. The Chippewas were able to uh, kill off that five-on-three, but they were still left on a five-on-four, and that is when they tied up the hockey game. Back behind the net, near side, Cologne in the, in the corner. Cologne working along the left wing, half wall. He'll work into the circle, feed it down low. They feed it out in front, they score! And that's what a bad call will do. It'll give the Wolverines a tie game here at 6.02 with that 
The teams would head into the locker room deadlocked at two, but it would be the Chippewas to open up the sc er, scoring in the third period with Owen Campbell on a nice one-timer from Hayden Flynn below the goal line. Jordan Cooper up on right wing, intended a pass, and will feed it Gibbs near side, over the line, chips it into the corner, will go to work there along the half wall. Mason Blue get it though, and Jordan Chippewas Cooper. would then uh, have the have the lead for most of the rest of the hockey game, but the Michigan Wolverines would score a very late goal with the goaltender pulled. Uh, it was the captain. Uh, it was the captain uh, Jake Stewart who batted it out in front from the bottom of the right circle, and he found Tommy Shea out in front. Wolverines win the draw up top. Here's. Crom gets it down low to 20. 20 trying to feed it out. Brennan Martin goes to the line, but not out. Kept in left point by Crom. Yeah. He'll feed it out in front. Loose puck bouncing around in the slot. Stewart whacked at it. Rebound side of the net. They feed it in front. They score! With 16 seconds left, it was free at the side of the net. Stewart fed it out in front. And we are tied with 16.6 to go. It would be overtime for both these two teams, and the attitude going into that extra frame for the Chippewas, Devin, was not very good. Sticks were slammed on the bench, but they would recover, and Brennan Martin scored an electric goal to put the Chippewas home with a win. 75 seconds to go. Puck loose to the Michigan end. Blocked there by Brennan Martin. Here's Martin into the right corner, working behind the net, looking for a pass. He'll work to the high slot. Let a shot go. Scores! Brennan Martin, the captain, would do it over time. And the Chippewas have knocked off the Michigan Wolverines at the Arctic Edge Canton. Yeah, what a goal that was by Brennan Martin. And what a call by you, Reagan, for Martin's <laughs> seventh you, of the season at the overtime winner. The Chippewas finally knocked that bug of ties throughout the season and got their first overtime of the win to stay alive for first place in the MCHC standings, which is coming up next. Final shot totals from that last game were 37-51 in favor of the Wolverines. Thomas Rove saved 48 or 51. He was our second star of the game, and he would rally the, the troops and the Chippewas to a 4-3 overtime win. Taking a look now at our MCE standings. Lawrence Tech sits at the top of the standings right now with eight wins and two ties on the season. They sit with 18 points and the Chippewas right now look at themselves just about 4.86 points down so far and they need every game from this point to catch up to them. In second place is the Michigan Wolverines after they won last night in Adrian. They jumped up from fourth place to second now acquiring 16 points. This is the final regular season game for the Wolverines this season and they need this point if they want a chance at holding on to the second seed. In third place, the Adrian Bulldogs. They finished conference play last night with six wins, four losses, and one tie. Good enough for 13 points. Saginaw Valley State sits fourth with the same amount of point totals with five wins, four losses, one overtime loss, and two ties, which is where the Chippewas sit next. At nine games played, five wins, two losses, and two ties. They have 12 points, or yeah, 12 points right now on the board, and they can get two per game win, which they need all of those in order to catch up to Lawrence Tech. They finish out the season with three games to go against Michigan, Lawrence Tech tomorrow, as well as on Saturday. And Reagan, they're going to need every point they can get. Oakland rounds out the standings of the University of Michigan Flint with four points and zero points, respectively. Now time to throw it back to Reagan real quick to take a closer look at the two teams today. Yeah, I'd have you mentioned the fact that the Chippewas need all the points they can get in the MCHC, and they do need all of them. They are six points behind Lawrence Tech, sitting at 5-2-0-2 in conference with 12 points. They are fourth in the MCHC East. Overall record is a pretty healthy 12-3-0-5. Uh, oh, Those five ties are, eight, are the most in all three men's divisions in the American Collegiate Hockey Conference. At Martin Ice Arena this year, they are 6-2-0-1 oh, here at home. They are 6-2-0-2 in their last 10 games, including two ties against Florida Gulf Coast and the Oakland Golden Grizzlies. They also are 1-0-5 in overtime with five ties. Again, we mentioned that's been a rough season for the Chippewas in overtimes. And 
Uh, taking a look at the other side of the ice, Michigan comes into this game with an 11-7, 2-2 and -2 record. They are 26th in the ACHA with 22 points. They are 7-2, 1-1 in conference, as Devin mentioned earlier. That's good enough for 16 points in the MCHC East. They are, in the, they are closing out tonight a 5-5 five five stretch. On Sunday, they started out that against the Adrian Bulldogs before going to Michigan Flint at Crystal Fieldhouse. They split the opening two games of their 5-5, five and five, losing to Adrian and absolutely demolishing Michigan Flint. They then uh, hosted the Central Michigan Chippewas, and as you heard just a couple of moments ago, it was a rousing 4-3 victory for the Maroon and Gold, and uh, they followed that up with a 3-1 win against Adrian uh, back in... Oh, uh, back last night, and then they finish out the regular season here at Martin Ice Arena. They are 7-3 seven, three, seven three in their last 10, and they can tie Lawrence Tech at the top of the standings with 18 points with a win tonight. Take a look at the series history between these teams. Michigan has won five of the last six meetings, and since 2014-2015, Michigan leads this series with nine wins and eight losses to the Chippewas. So pretty close over their history of as teams in the MCHC, Reagan, but so far the Chippewas right now with their first win in five coming into tonight, trying to look for two on the campaign. As for CMU, uh, their scratches tonight are as the uh, as follows. The goaltenders, uh, Colin Smith and Joel Drucker, will be the scratches for them, as well as Darsh Kopchak, Luke Wild, Kyle Chapman, and Austin Whaley. We do not have scratches for you at the moment for Michigan, but we will get that to you later before puck drop, if it be so be. Take a look at our players to watch. Reagan, you had the first one tonight. Brendan Martin had the game-winning goal in Michigan, and so far second on the team in assists. Yeah, he has been absolutely phenomenal this year. The sixth-year captain for the Central Michigan Chippewas. He hasn't been the captain all six years, but he has played in the ACHA and with the Maroon and Gold for six seasons. He has been a workhorse back on the blue line this season, showing with those 10 assists on the campaign. The other player to watch is Isaac Gibbs, the star freshman from Novi, Michigan, the leader in goals and has points in six of his last day. And I'll tell you what, Reagan, Isaac Gibbs didn't get on the board, or he did get the assist last night in Owen Campbell's goal, but frustrated after the game in the overtime, headed there, did not want to go to that sixth tie. He'll be a story to watch throughout this game. Yeah, he certainly will. He was one of those Chippewas that was frustrated on the bench after letting up that goal with only 17 seconds left in the play, on the clock in the third period of play. And now the Chippewas certainly uh, need need to rely on him and that top line to produce some points here tonight against the Wolverines. A player to look at on the Michigan side is number 20, Tommy Shea, scored his first two goals of the season on the matchup on Tuesday against Central Michigan, and he has now a two-game point streak coming into tonight, the most on his seven games throughout the season. Jake Stewart, the captain for the Wolverines, was our other player to watch. He has four assists in his last four games, and he had an assist on Shea's game-tying goal two nights ago. Now time for Reagan to get to our keys to the game. Reagan, what you got? Yeah, first thing I've got for the Chippewas here tonight is to get a fast start. They got that on Tuesday against the Michigan Wolverines back at Arctic Edge uh, of Canton. They were... Uh, with that fast start, they were able to overcome a late def or they were over over able to overcome a late rush by the Wolverines, and that helped them out certainly in the long run. They uh, they also need to keep the pedal down. Last or last time out, they did let Michigan come back two separate times. They were able to win it in overtime, but that certainly can't be the norm every single night. Absolutely, Reagan, for our final portion of the pregame show. We'll get to the light the lamp later on during our game time presentation, but that'll just about do it for this portion of our pregame show presented by CMHISocket.com. We'll get you set for puck drop coming up next as CMU quarterback Daniel Richardson will be dropping the puck ceremoniously here before the game start. You're watching live on CCHN ahead of the second game of this weekend series between Central Michigan and Michigan. We'll be right back.
Back with you inside Martin Ice Arena had a puck drop as pregame ceremonies are beginning. And out there right now, if you look closely at your screen, is CMU quarterback Daniel Richardson dropping the ceremonious puck here tonight. A good friend of Justin McComas, the number 15 forward for the Chippewas. As we'll listen in to Austin Whaley give us our pregame rundown of the starting lineups. Daniel drops the puck right there. Also there with Captain Jake Stewart for the Wolverines out there. Our photographer Tristan Hagenstein doing a fantastic job. You'll be able to catch his photo photos and more coming up later in the post game. As right now we'll get to our starting lineups for both teams. Starting old tenders tonight for the Central Michigan Chippewas. They turn to Thomas Rofe, who has 17 games played under his belt this season. A 10-3-0-4 record, a 2.27 goals against average, and a pretty healthy 9.37 save percentage. As for the Wolverines, they turn to the goaltender. They turn to the other night. It's Ben Hillman, who through 13 games has a 7-4-1-1 record, a 377 goals against average, and Devin Wolverines hope he plays a little bit better than he did on Tuesday here tonight. That they do, and he did have an excellent night, saving 33 on 37, but they will need him to be excellent once again. Starting lineups for the Chippewas tonight at forwards, it'll be Owen Campbell, number six, out there with Isaac Gibbs on the wing, number 19, as well as the forward, number 78, Jordan Cooper. On defense, it'll be Keelan Baker moving back there, along with Christopher Martin. For the Wolverines, it'll be number three on defense, William McGraw out there on defense with Danny Colon, William Rothmatter, at forward Griffin Warden, and a cast of others as we are underway here for Martin Ice Arena. Puck draw quickly won by the Wolverines who move quickly into the zone. Taken away there by the forward Jordan Cooper. Jordan Cooper, the native of Novi, Michigan, starting in his 18th game of the season, was suspended for a couple of games this season for altercations earlier this year, 
but he's looking to score another goal here. Had one the other night against these exact Wolverines. It's hit the coming first shot of the game, just wide there off the blade of Owen DeVries, who sends this deep into the zone. Corralled their attempt for Griffin Warden. Can't handle this one, it'll come back out to center. And it was Cooper's goal that opened up the scoring against Michigan, just 5.15 in. It was a pretty nice one-time pass, and now a penalty is going to come up against the Chippewas here. Yeah, look out. That'll be a trip against Isaac Gibbs over there at the near side, or the far side boards with William Rothmanner. So already off the bat, the Chippewas, 9.16 left in this first period will go to the penalty kill. The Wolverines were one for four the other night on the penalty kill, and they've been one of the more solid teams in the MCHC as far as their power play grows, goes, and they're going to send out the forward groups out there, Mason Beaker, along with William Rothmanner, as well as on the wing, Tommy Shea. Yeah, Chippewas were three for four on the penalty kill last time out against these Wolverines as a clearing attempt is put out there by Keegan Moore. They That improved their penalty kill percentage uh, 283.5 on the campaign. They started out a bit wary on the penalty kill early in the season, but they've certainly strengthened it since. Here come the Wolverines over the rush. Logan Gar scored the other night for the Wolverines. Actually, the first goal for them in the last game, trying to crawl it over the blue line, but gets it taken away there from Keegan Moore. This penalty crew kill group amongst Aiden Gass, Decky, Keegan Moore, and Ben Rychuk have been phenomenal all season. They're going to have to be right here as the Wolverines right now 125 left in their power play. It's stuck behind the net. Getting over there was Alex Lasky to help out. The star defenseman there for the Chippewas trying to corral the puck under his skates. It comes to the far side boards. Alex Lasky from Jackson High School, Jackson, Michigan. Went to the same high school as Jackson Lumen Christie, as Owen Campbell and Jacob Kosnick. As here come the Wolverines now. They turn the puck over. Keegan Moore sends this one deep, and the Chippewas will get a nice clear here to get fresh bodies on the ice. You know what? Uh, you mentioned uh, the clearing in, and we... That, that Brings us to an opportunity to talk about the referees. we got four again tonight, so maybe we have a little bit of a streak. Two referees, two linesmen, and two straight games. Hopefully we can continue that. Yeah, Reagan's talking about a couple of games. The Chippewas have been faced with referee changes for one referee and, or one linesman and two referees, a couple of scenarios. But tonight we get a full crew, full cast, four referees on the ice here tonight. As the Wolverines try to manage something in this first power play, an excellent kill so far for the Chippewas. Not a single shot on Thomas Rolfe yet in this game. As right now they try to handle it, they don't. The near side. Boards. Daniel Colon has to get this one sent out of the zone. Pressure by Owen Campbell, and it'll clear down the way. And already the Chippewas are playing a much better game than they did in the opening minutes of the game at Arctic Edge of Canton. They're getting in the passing lanes and being able to disrupt this Michigan rush. Look out. Here's one of the leading scorers for the Wolverines. Daniel Colon moving deep into the zone. Eight seconds left in their power play. The near side corner drops it there for Robinson. He'll have to be pressured there. Peels it back to his own far side boards. And he'll send this one to the other side for the opposing number 10. That's Keelan Baker over there, the captain for the Chippewas. Now it's tied up in the near side, far side corner once again. It's Owen Campbell over there. There with Christopher Martin. Christopher Martin, the brother of Captain Brennan Martin. Quick shot on net. Rofe made the first save with 17 left in this first. And it's a beauty right there. Yeah, and a good save there by Thomas Rofe. He had the he had the shooting lane entirely open in front of him, so we saw it all the way. And he made a pretty good save there, did Thomas Rofe. Thomas Rofe, the sixth, sixth year goaltender from Gross Isle, Michigan, has started in two previous seasons for Lawrence Tech, but has been with the Chippewas for the last three or so, and one of the best in the ACHA with a .937 save percentage. Look out, here come the Chippewas the other way. Jacob Kosnick deep into the zone there. He'll be met up there with Jacob St. Andre, one of my light the lamps tonight that we'll get on to later, but it's tied up right now at the far side corner again. Sounder gets some space. Sends it deep for Simon Sally, who just sent that wide far side. Another shot attempt from Martin there, and that one's easily stopped with the left blocker of Heelman, and it'll be cleared out back to center. A couple of great quality saves there from the Michigan netminder, being able to uh, knock away two great opportunities, first by Simon Sally, and then a little bit later on another great opportunity there for the Maroon and Gold. Here's the chip was once again. Joey Jacob Sinadri crowding that one, the senior fifth year from Riverview, Michigan has played in 106 ACHA games, has 60 goals, 90 assists, 150 points. And he attended the same high school as freshman teammate Aiden Gazdecki, as well as assistant coach Dalton Sumlin in his time. And Jacob St. Andre, one of the best goal scorers in Central Michigan D3 history, trying to get the Chippewas on the board here. But he'll go off the ice and he'll get fresh bodies as the faceoff comes back to center ice. Justin McComas took that one, the senior from Northfield, Michigan, one of 10 players on this, on this team entering their fourth season or later for the Chippewas. Was. And I'll tell you what, Jacob, Justin McComas has been excellent in his last couple games, Reagan. Yeah, he certainly has been the uh, senior for the Chippewas. He was the leading scorer two campaigns ago. Good keeper of the line here. 
Good keep in the line as Reagan mentioned, but Rofe has to glove this one down for just a moment as streaking in there was Will Robinson to crowd that one. 15-50 to go in this first period of play. No score so far. You're listening live to the second game of this weekend series between Central Michigan and, or this week's series, I should say, between <laughs> Central and Michigan. Central won the last meeting on Tuesday in a 4-3 overtime thriller. Look out, a quick shot on net there from Robinson turned aside by Rofe. As they're pressuring here, trying to send one in front there and was met up to the blade by Justin McComas who sends this one back out to center. George trying to join the rush was Jay Nadu. He couldn't crowd that one, sent to the other side and dumped deep into the zone there by Andrew Porzondik. Andrew Porzondik, the third, the second year sophomore from Macomb, Michigan. Right now, second on the team in points. Nine goals, ten assists. Look out, another shot on net there from Robinson and Rofe makes the easy stave on the initial stop. Yeah, that one was going wide on Thomas Rope, but he decides to hold it and uh, let it let, and love it with that uh, catching love on the left hand, just to just uh, s s yeah, just to stop play for a little bit and uh, allow the Chippewas to change some lines. Face off will be taken here by Aiden Gazdecki, the freshman from Riverview, Michigan. Scored his first goal of the season versus Adrian earlier this year on a buzzer beater goal to end the second period of that game. Aiden Gazdecki, one of the best defensive forwards on the Chippewa team, who notably mans that top penalty kill group for the Chippewas. Dang. Now this pucks crowd back to center by Hayden Flynn. Hayden Flynn has three goals in his last and three goals in five in his last five games. He's been absolutely phenomenal. The fourth liner there, back out there trying to get on the board for the chips. Michigan trying to get out of their own zone right now, however, and is sent back out to center here. The other side, here it comes. It's met up here by number 27, Nicholas Welch, for the Wolverines, the rookie defenseman from Dearborn Heights, Michigan. Now it's back here for the Chippewas. They'll go D to D out there. Keegan Moore and Keelan Baker. A pair of 16 and 10. They play, play, play tag in front of the blue line. Keelan Baker sends this one deep into the zone and allows the Chippewas to get fresh bodies out here. And Brennan Martin will come streaking in to help out the play. As right now, Owen Campbell is trying to take this one away. It's flipped up out of the zone by a Wolverine defender. And it's sent back into the zone by Cooper. But he sends this one up into the awning for a stoppage of play. Yeah, you, Devin, we, we mentioned off the top of the last game that the Chippewas were had a slow start despite those two early goals. Tonight, it's kind of the opposite. They've been getting pressure in on Ben Heelman, the Michigan Nutmutter, making him make saves. And they've also had a good opportunity uh, to let Thomas Rofe make a couple of saves, but not pressure him too much, let him get a good uh uh, slight, slightly smaller workload than they were giving them to start the game Yes, er, earlier this week. Here's Owen DeVries for the Wolverines. Sends this one deep into the zone where Thomas Rolf will cry, oh. but it's turned over quickly. DeVries tried to get a shot on that, and it was blocked in front off the blade of Martin after he gave it up. Comes the other side for Owen Campbell. Owen DeVries, the rookie from Rockford, Michigan, has seven goals, nine assists for 16 points this season. And he played in 66 games for Meyer AAA Hockey over his career. Scoring 14 goals, 9 assists, and 23 points. And he led the team in assists at Rockford High School last season. So Tell me about it, Devin. He was, a, he was a menace to Catholic Central last <laughs> season. <laughs> Absolutely. As you called those games, a quick stop here from Heelman Reagan. You know, you called a couple games, as you mentioned, for Catholic Central. And you know a little bit about Owen DeVries. Tell us a little bit about what he was doing last game. We noticed him all over the forecheck. Didn't get on the board, but he does have an assist last night against Adrian. Yeah, he was all over the ice. He's one of the top line uh, players for the Michigan Wolverines. He's all over the ice. He does a great job getting in the defensive passing lanes when his team's on defense. But also, he's great on the forecheck. Faceoffs won here by the Wolverines. They come back out of December and join the rush. It's sent deep into the zone there by Mason Beaker. But we take into the near side corner. Jacob St. Andre trying to take this one away. Trying to get a quick shot off was Mason Beaker, and he fanned on it again. Now here come the Chippewas over the line. Over center ice, it's Simon Selly to in front of the Wolverine bench here. It'll be sent here, shielded off by the defender, St. Andre, and the Wolverines will send this to the other side. It's met up there once again by Beaker. Turned the puck over, and it was met up by a Chippewa, Kosnick. Now they send this one back out to center, and roughing him off was Alex Lasky. Reagan, we haven't really seen too much of a physical series between these two teams, but we know that they can get rough when they need to. Certainly, it's a little bit of a change from the previous uh, Central Michigan series as this team has been, played physical all year long, especially with the presence of Hayden Flynn and Ben Rychek, their two top penalty minute getters. They've been uh, a very physical team all year. It was a little bit of an odd game last time out without... Too many rough, too much rough housing. Now trying to enter the attacking zone was Dylan Shelton, but he sent this puck off a Chippewa body straight into the bench for the backup goaltender out there for the Chippewas, Colin Smith. 
Callen Smith actually started uh, the game against Oakland back here on Martin Iceberg that ended up being a 3-3 tie. Uh, we talked with him over uh, at practice earlier this week talking about how it felt for him to get back into the offense as this one rolls in on Rolf will hold it for a stop with 12-18 to go. Yeah, and you did talk to him at practice, among notable others. And the, the whole memo of that practice, really, Reagan, talking about that game and this one, was that from the Chippewas here on out, they have to win out in order to catch Lawrence Tech in the top of the MCHC. As we will begin tournament play next week on the 19th and 20th, as quickly over the attacking zone as Justin McComas takes a shot, and Heelman made the glove save from the left circle. But talking a little bit about what I was mentioning of the last three games of the regular season for the Chippewas, they have to win all these to catch Lawrence Tech in the top of the standings, who sit up there with eight. 18 points, and the Chippewas would have a tiebreaker if they did win out because the last two games of the season are against Lawrence Tech. And the thing is, both these teams need to win out in order to capture that first place crown as Michigan sits only two points behind Lawrence Tech, uh, a little bit further up than we thought they were earlier this week, but some games hadn't been added to the ACHA website, but they are as well within striking distance of the Blue Devils at the top of the NCHC. Looked up, here comes Michigan over the line on the rush, a quick shot on Wolf, and it's slamming into the net there was Justin McComas after the shot attempt on goal there from Will Robinson. And we'll get a stoppage of play for that one as Justin McComas, good to see him getting up. He took a hard spill behind Rofe there, Reagan. Yeah, it did. It looked like he lost an edge kind of going into the post. Brennan Martin was getting into it with Trevor Kalish behind the net there. And uh, the Chippewas don't, get, don't come out with a power play here as McComas thought he may have been tripped, but it ended up he just lost an edge. And so the referees decided to... Just a war to draw on the Chippewa end. This is the fifth game of the season for the Wolver or the fifth game in five days, and their last of the regular season for the Wolverines, who, as Reagan mentioned, do have a chance still at that second place spot for the MCHC going to tournament play. But the Chippewas right now need to avoid giving them a point for them to pass them. Right now they would have the tiebreaker for that overtime win. But Wolverine is not going away without a fight. It's a quick shot on net there from Kier Cumming. And Rofe makes the easy glove stop. Yeah, Kier Cumming actually played for the Forest Hills Northern Eastern Bird Dogs back in the Grand Rapids area. He was actually a teammate of assistant coach Tyler Koth. Uh, back when both of them played on Forest Hills Northern Eastern, a big powerhouse in, in in the Grand Rapids area. I'll tell you what, the defenseman from Ada, Michigan, had a three-game point streak going on earlier this season against OU and Michigan State. So coming, certainly a defenseman that can get on the board for the Wolverines. They're going to need him to right here in the attacking zone. It's taken away here by Ben Wrightchuk. Quickly over the line, he comes there on the wing there with Keegan Moore. Keegan Moore tries to deke one player, turn the puck over, and it's taken out back, back out here by Ryan Rambo. Got tied up there on the boards. Hard hit from Hayden Flynn against the near side boards, and that fires up Austin Ritter on the bench for the Chippewas. Now back in their own zone, taking it there is William McGraw. McGraw, the second season defenseman from Wesley, Massachusetts right now, looking for his first goal of the season, but his last point came on. Lawrence Tech is a quick shot there from Gumming. That one turned aside by the left pad of Rofe and came back out to center. That was a dangerous play as there were a couple of Chippewas right out in front, and Thomas Rofe made that save, but that puck trampolined off his left pad right into the slot. Chippewas lucky, and there were no Wolverines in the area to Jam that puck home. Now Hayden Flynn intended to dish there to Jordan Cooper. Here comes a Wolverine attacking it. It's loose in front, and that one trickled wide as Griffin Warden took the initial shot, and a bouncing puck got past Rofe, but he sees this one and gloves that one down. A couple of dangerous chances for the Wolverines, and Reagan, they absolutely dominated the first period shot totals, 20-7 to in favor of Michigan on Tuesday night. Certainly, it felt like we were watching Florida Gulf Coast all over again, albeit a little bit better, but... The Wolverines do a great job in the offensive end, getting players to the net and getting pucks to the net, trying to take advantage of those rebounds that Thomas Rofe gives up. Yeah, and Rofe, not a goaltender that likes to give up a lot of rebounds. I mentioned one of the best in the ACHA. Right there with a decent stop. This one's flipped right in front of our broadcast. Positioning here, just close to center ice there. And this faceoff will come back to uh, the near side faceoff circle for a uh, stoppage of play. Yeah, it was. If, if we didn't have the netting there, that would be a that would have been a bit of an odd situation there, Devin. And that's the test if you know you're a, uh, if, if you know you've been around hockey long enough. If you don't flinch when a puck's coming straight at you, I'll tell you what, I ain't flinching. <laughs> Daniel Kalar took that one shot, blocked away by the blade, and that one sent up into the netting by Christopher Martin. 
Yeah, Martin doing uh, what his brother did last night uh, a couple of times late in that hockey game, chipping the puck out, trying to clear it out of the zone, but it ends up going out of play. It cost the Chippewas last night when Brennan Martin did it a couple times late in that game. That gave the Wolverines an offensive zone draw. Let's hope it doesn't hurt him here. Back to the point here. Shot on net, trying to get a tip in front there was Michael, or Ethan Crum, excuse me, and that one just sent into the crest of Rowe for a stop. Fans, don't forget the CMU Club Hockey YouTube or Network YouTube channel is your one-stop shop for highlights, exclusive interviews, and full-game broadcasts for CMU D3 Hockey. Quick Make sure case. to subscribe and turn on notifications so as never to miss a moment of Chippewa Hockey. Just go to YouTube and search CMU Club Hockey Network. Christopher Martin sends his length to the ice, and he'll come back for an icing. Thank you for that one, Reagan. And you're listening in live, watching here from Martin Ice Arena as Chippewas look for their first of their two final games of the season here on home ice. Tomorrow they'll face take on Lawrence Tech here at home. The top team in the MCAC East ranked seventh in the nation. Just one below the Chippewas and that'll be on senior night as a look out. A quick shot there. Rebound in front and Rofe turned that one aside once or twice. Now Isaac Gibbs trying to send it out. Quick shot from the point once again there and Rofe turned that one aside from Shelton. Now it comes to the far side. Half wall. Back down low. Trying to look for a feed in front and that one's blocked away by Owen Campbell with his body. Now he'll check a defenseman there. Quick shot on net. One timer and Rolf made the save there on DeVries. What a save. What a setup though from Cologne along the near half wall feeding a DeVries right in the slot and he had a beautiful one timer right there on Rolf but the goaltender for the Chippewa stands tall to make yet another save here in this first 10 minutes and change. We were just talking about Owen DeVries earlier in this period, a dangerous player for the Wolverines. And looked out, it's free for the Wolverines. They send it in front, and they couldn't get the shot off. That one was intended on the one-timer for Robinson. Now here come the Chippewas on a three-on-two on the rush. Over the line, Jacob St. Andre sent this puck to eight, blocked off the skate of Jake Stewart, the captain for the Wolverines, and it ties up behind the net. The Chippewas take possession here. It's Jacob St. Andre. Back to the point for Martin. Send it back down low and intercepted right away there. Turned over. Simon Selly in the low slot. There are a shot on net from Kosnick and Hillman made the save. It comes free to the far side corner. St. Andre. Look, Kosnick looking for a wraparound chance there. And Hillman extended the left pad to make the stop. And they still have possession here. A great forecheck from the Chippewas. They turn the puck over, however, and here come the Wolverines back on the rush the other way. Over the line. To the slot area, shot on net from Robinson. It's blocked in front from Martin. A couple good blocks from the chips. Jacob Sinandre made a nice teak to move around the defender Strauss for the Wolverines, and they'll get fresh bodies. Yeah, great play there by Brennan Martin, not only to block that puck, but to also anticipate that we that he would have to come back defensively. Before that puck was even picked off, he was already skating backwards, seeing that it would have been picked off, and that that's what allowed him to get back there and make that defensive play. Turned over here by the Wolverines. Justin McComas didn't get a shot on net, and he sent it back to the point. Now the Chippewas back on the attack. Owen Campbell's taken down to the ice hard. No call on the ice for that one. Owen Campbell's still down, trying to find where he's at. And here come the Wolverines quickly back over the way. Mason Beaker goes wide, turns aside Hayes, who just slashed this blade of there perfectly to knock that puck free. Now it comes to the near side corner. It's turned over here. Chippewa is trying to get a one-touch one pass there from Porzondik as he had nobody home there to take it. And Charlie Hayes has to crowd behind his own net. Goes over to Lasky. It ends up to Maydew's blade. Now it comes back to center ice here. Dylan Shelton takes this one, and he'll send this one back over to the attacking zone. The Wolverines trying to get some more attacks on here. Still scoreless in this first period. We're going to get a whistle here for a presumed high stick. It's going to be actually offsides on the Wolverines coming over the line. It was Trevor Calise didn't have possession of the puck as he came across the line. So that will go for an offsides. And we'll have a draw just outside the Chippewa line across the way. Thomas there to take the draw against Logan Gar and McComas won it. D to D go Baker and Martin. Keelan Baker, the captain forward, notably plays forward most of the season, but with Kyle Chapman and Austin Whaley out for the season, he has to go back there and play as a defensive forward. And I'll tell you what, he's done a great job so far for the Chippewas all season at that position, Reagan. He certainly has been, and it got to the point where I didn't even think of him as a, as a forward, and when Joel uh, Drucker not notified of us uh, no, notified us of that a couple of games ago, I had to do a readjustment in my head because I'm like, he's been playing defense so long and so well that it's been kind of a kind of a given that he's a defenseman. Rink wide, clear by the chips. We'll send this icing all the way back to their own face-off circle. Rolf's come up big a couple of times in this first period, trying to keep this game scoreless right now. 
Taking the face off again, Logan Gar for the Wolverines, the freshman from Williamsburg, New York. Quick shot on net there on Rofe, and he made the initial stop. It comes free now to the blade of Michael Strauss. Strauss gets tied up with a couple of players. He's met up there with Gar. Gets it back to the point here. Wolverines trying to get the attack set one in front, and a near side miss just went off the end boards, and it came back to a Wolverine forward. That's Mason Beaker at the far side. And now we'll send this back the other side. Streaking in, it's Jerk coming. Goes down hard with Baker at the near side corner, and they both have to get up ginger as McComas sends this one back out to center. He'll dish this over to Martin, who will send this one rink wide all the way to Heelman, and they'll get a race for the puck. It's Ben Rychuk over there. The notable forward for the Chippewas from Granville, Michigan, the third-year player. And two goals, two assists on the season. This one comes back to Martin in his own end, where he'll corral this one. No players change just yet. You know what? That's a great play by Ben Rychuk. Coming back to negate that icing play as... If, if he hadn't done, if he hadn't beaten his man to the dot, that would have been an icing against the Chippewas, and they would have had to draw on their defensive end. Here's Jake Stewart sending this one deep in, the captain for the Wolverines. Jake Stewart from Ant, from Grand Rapids, Michigan, in his fourth season. His lookout, quick shot on net, a save, rebound, and that one's loose in front still, and he made the initial save. Rofe did on DeVries with the crest. Now Keegan Moore takes this one, as I was saying, Jake Stewart, one of the best defensemen for the Wolverines in his fourth season and has 11 assists on the season, leading the team in that category. As Lookout skating wide, here's one set in front there on Rofe by Warden, and he made the initial stop. The Wolverines still have possession on the four check here. Cross ice there, Jack to Stewart, and Rofe saw it the whole way with the nice glove stop there to negate Stewart's shot. You know what, Rofe's made a couple of fantastic saves through traffic here tonight through the first 15 minutes of this hockey game. He's He's had a ton of bodies out in front of him, but he's used his height to be able to uh, find the puck and make those saves. Very good performance here from Rofe. Thomas Rofe standing at six foot three inches tall. Can see all the ice where most goaltenders go. And as Jordan Cooper absolutely laid out a man in front of us here. That was Nicholas Welch. You saw that on your screen. Jordan Cooper, the strong body forward, trying to make something happen here. They get the Chippewa some momentum. 4.49 to go in this first period. It comes all the way to Michigan's end now. And there is Isaac Gibbs, the star freshman, leading the team in points and goals, trying to corral that puck. He comes free to center now. Pickpocketed there was a Wolverine defender from Jordan Cooper. It comes all the way back to Stewart, and he'll send this one deep. And this one's a corral there by Charlie Hayes. Hayes. Saucers this one over to Jordan Cooper who couldn't handle it and it's sent back deep once again by this time Owen DeVries or William McGraw, excuse me, it's loose in front and Rofe had to use the blade there as the Wolverines came streaking in, a shot on net, that one corralled around in front and still loose trying to whack it in the air and Rofe made the initial stop there, great job seeing that all the way through. And you know what, that sequence starts with a fluky play, that uh, pass behind the net it hit the referee and as the Chippewas, that's a rough one as this goes just off sides. Good call there by the official, but that's part of the game. If, it, if a puck hits the referee, it, it happens and it just so happens that in that instance, the Michigan Wolverines get a good chance out of it, but Thomas Rofe stands tall and makes a couple of key saves with 4.01 to go. So 4.01 to go in this first period. Stay with us for the first intermission report as Reagan laughs at my uh, <laughs> little crack there. <clears throat> a little bit. <laughs> Aaron Gamble, one of our producers and cameramen here at uh, for this coverage of CCHN, sat down or stood with Daniel Richardson, quarterback for the Chippewas, in an interview that will be coming up in the first intermission report. You'll want to listen to that one as it was a good one. Uh, quarterback for the nice yeah. call here. The quarterback for the Chippewas, leading them all the way to the Sun Bowl this season, defeating Washington State to get a Power 5 victory. And I'll tell you what, it was a pretty cool ceremony to see yeah. Daniel Richardson. He's sitting in the crowd with us here tonight in a uh, presumed bleacher-packed Martin Ice Arena, but uh, <laughs> not much of a student section there. As this one's quick shot on that, sent in front. It's still loose, and Rolf had to send that one down with the glove. That was Jamie Newton getting in there, trying to whack away at it. Yeah, and that, that win in the Sun Bowl for the for the Chippewas football team was a very impressive win and it came out of a fluky chain of events uh, they were originally supposed to play in Arizona in the Barstool Bowl but that got cancelled because their opponent Boise State uh, contracted COVID as a diving play is clear to the line Sent deep here and sending it to the awnings was Roth Manor trying to crowd that one and you mentioned a good football team Reagan how about your Cincinnati Bengals going to the Super Bowl here on Sunday yeah. and obviously they're your pick to win the Super Bowl mine's oh, the Rams of course they are I'm with all the Stafford uh, you know you're with 99% of Michigan <laughs> and I don't blame any 
one for going with the Rams because of Matthew Stafford. Uh, Matthew Stafford deserves one. Long-time quarterback for the Lions, playing oh, in his first season with the Rams. pass there. Nice pass there over to Kosnick there. And a quick tip in front. It went just over Heelman on the near side. My goodness, that was tipped in front. That's a dangerous play for the Michigan defenseman. He was trying to block that pass across the slot, but he ended up almost popping that into his own net after it hit his stick and fluttered up. Now look out. Look out. Gar over the line gets a shot on net, and Rofe says none of that. Gar made a couple of nice sneaks to get right into the scoring lane there as a noble goal scorer for the Wolverines. Gar has been really all over the nice for that top group. And you know what? The Wolverines like to run their first two lines the majority of the game as they have a lot of the goal scorers out here in Cologne, DeVries, and Gar playing together on that top line. Yeah, and Gar scored that impressive goal to get the... Uh Get the Wolverines on the board. Now look, look out at the pass. Poor Zonikin on a one-on-one. -on -one. He shoots, and that one just went wide off the blocker oh, oh. and into the netting. Poor Zonik took a long stretch feed all the way over the blue line and tried to wrist it near side on Heelman. Man, that was the first great chance of the game for the Chippewas. Oh, that's a fantastic shades, and I'm getting PTSD from that Oakland game when uh, Isaac Gibbs missed on that breakaway in overtime, and another great opportunity there for the Chippewas that they can't cash in on this season. Now here's Marcelo Monaco for the Wolverines, the freshman from Rochester, Michigan, trying to crowd this one. It comes all the way back to Heelman's blade. Good pressure here for the Chippewas in the final 220 of this first frame. Still scoreless here for Martin Ice Arena for the second game of this series. Look out, they have it in front. They shoot, score! Parzondic got the feed in front there from Macomas, and he makes it 1 0 for the Chippewas, just like that. Yeah, a great play there by, uh, by uh, going through the line. That's Hayden, the pundits. Austin Ritter going through. Looks like he may have gotten that goal. Great play there by the Chippewas, crashing the net and getting that goal there. Yeah, really great job there. I believe it was Porzonic catching that one in front, Reagan. But nonetheless, what you mentioned, a great crash from the Chippewas. Manning pressure. That's something we didn't see in the game Tuesday where it looked like the Chippewas were kind of sitting back, waiting for Michigan to attack them in the zone. Well, they pressure here now, and they get the first goal in this game. Up one nothing with 2-12 to go in the game. Or the first period. <laughs> That's Angie Porzonic presumably gets that one. We'll wait for the official scoring chart there. But, man, what a goal for the Chippewas because they've now scored the first game in back-to-back -back games in this one. And I'll tell you what, he was one of our keys in the game on Tuesday night, and I bet it was one of yours presumably here, Reagan. Yeah, certainly. Andrew Porzondik, he was riding a five-game point streak before the second Oakland game. Now, nice save there by Thomas Rofe, robbing uh, Cologne from a shot to the top right corner with a tick under two minutes left. Rofe has been excellent on that glove side, particularly tonight, Reagan. As, and as a goaltender yourself, what are some of the mechanics that you do as a goaltender to get a nice glove save like that? Well, it's really just about glove positioning. Is There's another shot. No, oh, that one's tipped in front. Oh, as you were mentioning there, Reagan, that was Owen DeVries getting in on a tip. That one, it just went wide of Rofe. I thought he would handle that, but... You know, you're talking about those mechanics. He's been excellent all night on that glove side, and it's more of just they've been sending that right in there as it looks like he's just so tall in that net. Yeah. Uh, Hayden Flynn almost getting away with a closing his hand on the puck as he tried to throw that out of the zone. Wolverines take back over their own zone here. Here's Griffin Warden. Warden over the line, turned over, pickpocketed there by Hayden Flynn. And Hayden Flynn, I'll tell you what, has been de great defensively so far in this first period for the chips and Certainly they're going to send been. this one back to center ice. Isaac Gibbs here with Keelan Baker. Baker sent this one back. The center was turned over here. Over the line quickly is Cologne. He's shoot and fanned on that one as pressuring in there was Baker to screen him in front. Great now back. Goes back to the near side corner. Great back check there by Owen Campbell to be able to come from behind and knock Cologne's stick out of his hands. Now Looked an intercept. Out. Fan on the pass there was McGraw and back out through center comes Owen Campbell. He's got Jordan Cooper with him. Pickpocketed there, poked at by William Rothmanner, and he gets this one free to his Michigan defenders. 41 to go in the period. Over the line, quickly moving in is Cologne. Cologne, he'll drop this one down for number 18. Tommy Shea, or Sort, rather, comes back over here to the near side. And, excuse me, an unregistered 18 there for the Wolverines. Comes back out to center here. Now back through to the other side of the zone. It'll be taken here by Keelan Baker as... Uh, Reagan corrects me here, number 18, Andrew Beggs. So Andrew Beggs, the leading goal scorer, as I presumably whiffed on for the Wolverines. Ten seconds to go in the period. We'll get a whistle here for a quick stop. 
And it looks like a penalty could be coming up here, Reagan. Gonna be an elbowing on Jordan Cooper, an ill-advised penalty by the Central Michigan alternate captain here with just eight seconds left in the first period. Michigan did score on a power play a couple of nights ago and Chippewas have been stellar on the penalty kill but can't give your opponent too many opportunities. Keep this top group out here. We haven't seen much of them tonight. Number 18, Andrew Beggs, the rookie from Beverly Hills, Michigan, leads the team in goals this season with 12. He's looked at a one-timer from the right top of the right circle there. Taken by Ethan Crum, and that one sent back out to center for the end of the period. A dangerous chance there for the Wolverines, and right now they are down one nothing in this game to the Chippewas. They'll go off the ice and come back in a second for a single play with that power play. So, so far, Chippewas on top, one nothing from an Andrew Porzondic goal with Justin McComas, and we'll try to get you the official scoring tally of this one. As We'll take you to the break. Coming up here in the intermission report, it was our own take an interview with Daniel Richardson over there and uh, we'll have that one up for you in the intermission here as you're listening live to Central Michigan Hockey here on CCHN. Thanks, guys. I am here ringside with Daniel Richardson, D. Rich, the quarterback for CMU. Welcome, Daniel. Uh, it's awesome that you're here to uh, drop the puck tonight. So, tell me, so a couple football questions for you because season just uh, ended a couple of months ago. Tell me your thoughts on beating Western and uh, you know your overall reaction of bringing home that uh, victory cannon because it's been a long time. And it's a great feeling to bring home that victory cannon. Just a tradition here, being here, man. Last last 10, 12 years, we only beat them, what, two two or three times. But just bringing home that trophy, winning on their field was an unbelievable feeling. Yeah, especially in Kalamazoo, right? Uh, you know, it, it adds it adds to it. So now take me now take me through Bowl Week. Now that was definitely a crazy type of a week. Um, you know, you guys going to Arizona first for the Barstool, playing Boise, and then you changing halfway through the week to go to El Paso to play Washington State. Just take us through that week real quick. Man, that trip was, I mean, it was an unbelievable trip. I mean, we got to um, to Arizona and uh, 
the day we got to practice, coach was like, well, you guys, I don't know if we're going to be playing. We were like, what? Because Boise State backed out or whatever. I guess they had a couple COVID issues. And, but he was like, I got, got something even better. We playing Washington State. And just to play a Pac-12 team, it was – it was a great, it was a great experience just to be playing on um, CBS and man, it was an unbelievable feeling just to win and hold a bowl trophy and bring bring it back to Mount Pete. Yeah, holding holding the bowl trophy and uh, dumping not only a Gatorade but the Frosted Flakes on oh, Coach yeah. Mack. Yeah, that that must have been that pretty was, fun, right? That was awesome. That was awesome. Um, and so you had a great game in the Sun Bowl. Now tell me what was going through your mind as that clock was going down, knowing you're, you're going to be bowl champion basically your freshman year man watching that game on tv like from a little from a little kid i mean it's just it was unreal because like the mac you don't get the opportunity to play in a, a bowl game like that some bowl you get the opportunity but just to get the opportunity with the guys was 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 a great feeling and so, so now we're, we're gonna get some uh, fun questions for, for you so we're right here at ringside so i gotta know uh daniel can you can you skate uh i can roller skate but i don't know about yeah, ice right. skate this is my first time to ice rink so I'm very excited. I mean, I watch the Florida Panthers a lot because I'm, I'm from Florida, but this, this is going to be exciting for me to, just to see. You just, took, you just took the words right out of my uh, <laughs> out of my mouth. So you uh, you have a favorite NHL team. So I take it's the Florida Panthers, yes, right? Yes, it is. It is. You guys, they're playing pretty good hockey right they, now. They definitely, yeah. I think they were 31 and seven or eight. One of them. I, I keep up with it. Uh, what's your favorite party song? Uh, what I what I would say, Rick Ross pop that. <laughs> all right, all right. I. Uh, your favorite menu item at O'Kelly's? Huh, menu item, the wings. <laughs> so you're, you and Lou Nichols are now wing ambassadors at O'Kelly's. So what, what is a wing ambassador? Basically, we're going to have our own sauce. Uh, we'll have a wing Wednesday starting start the following week, and just everybody come out on Wednesday and, and enjoy our sauces and our wings and everything. So you're going to have like a D-rich sauce and yeah, all that kind of stuff? Oh, yeah. yeah it's gonna be awesome. So your favorite team to play, uh, play as in Madden? Uh, Dolphins. Really? The Miami Dolphins? Yes, sir. Okay. And so if you were not playing college football here at CMU, what would you be doing right now? Uh, I'd probably be home, probably DJing and, you know, just living life, probably. <laughs> and I'll probably have a, at the end of the day, I mean, one day I want to own a funeral home. That's my goal. But just, just getting my life started, probably doing school. That's it. Uh, what are you majoring in? Uh, entrepreneurship and minor in uh, management. All right. Uh, your favorite place to be on vacation? Uh, the Bahamas. <laughs> I love it. I think everybody at, at this point is Michigan, right? Uh, and finally, Daniel, I know it's early, but what can we expect for the Chippewas going into the 2022-2023 season? You know, hopefully winning the MAC championship, right? We got a that's, really good roster. That's, that's the goal. That's the goal to win a MAC championship and, and win another bowl game. Bring it, bring it back to Mount Pleasant. Mount Pleasant. Yeah, absolutely, winning another MAC title. They already they they just won the Tony the Tiger Sun Bowl, dumping Coach Mack with the Frosted Flakes oh, yeah. and uh, with Gator. Kind of a weird combo, but they are Sun Bowl champs over uh, Washington State. Daniel Richardson, D. Rich, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Have fun dropping the puck. Back to you guys. Thank you very much, Aaron. As we bring you back here inside the confines of Martin Ice Arena here in Mount Pleasant, Michigan. Back inside the broadcast booth with you here, Reagan Cleaves uh, for the first intermission report. A rather brief one for you here as we take you through the first 20 minutes. Not a ton happened in that first period. Owen Campbell was whistled off for an early tripping penalty. Chippewas were able to kill that off. And then later, late in this period, we've got a minute and 52 seconds left on it. Jordan Cooper was sent off for an elbowing penalty. Uh, on a late hit along the half wall right in front of us here. That puts the Chippewas on a penalty kill for the second time tonight. Again, one minute and 52 seconds left on that penalty kill when we come back for the second period. Overall, Chippewas played pretty darn well through the first 20 minutes. A lot better hockey played than their first 20 minute, the first 20 minute uh, slate of effort in that game on Tuesday. They're getting a ton of pressure on the Wolverines, although they faltered a little bit late in that in that first period with the Wolverines getting a couple of shots. But other than that, it has been a pretty darn good hockey game here thus far, and not a ton has gone on. Zamboni is just getting on off the ice behind us here, and we'll step aside. We'll be right back with the second period here on CCHN. You're watching CMU D3 Club Hockey on YouTube.
Back with you inside Martin Ice Arena here, getting set for second period action here from the Chippewas and the Wolverines. And I'll tell you what, Reagan, that was a great period for the Chippewas to start in the first 10 minutes. We had a little chat with assistant coach Dalton Sutherland. He said they were better in the first 10 minutes, but in the latter half there, the Wolverines got almost 10 shots off their initial faceoff. And I'll tell you what, they weren't really happy with that. Yeah, they certainly aren't happy with that. They're going to have to be a little bit better off of faceoffs as we go on here in this period and it should be a test here in the second 20 minutes absolutely and we'll get back to game action here as these players get set to pop the drop the puck for second period of play i want to remind you fans that cmu the cmu club hockey network is your one-stop shop for all things cmu club hockey and you can listen in on uh, cchn for our call tomorrow as the lawrence tech blue devils come into this arena so for that game and so you drop the puck we are back underway here for action from Martins. Here quickly in the deep zone is taken here by number 31, that's Heelman, and he'll send this one back for his captain forward now. Back inside the zone is our cameraman pants here, Brian. Yeah. Appreciate that one, Brian. Thank you for that. As quickly in the zone, Chippewas trying to defend here as the Wolverines start on their first initial attack. Clapper from the top of the left circle there by Jake Stewart, and Rove gloves that one down for the initial stop. Yeah, good save there by Thomas Rofe. He's been challenged a couple of times here early off of face-offs. 126 left in the man advantage here for the Wolverines. Keelan Baker tried to send this one out of the zone and went up and out of play. Baker, the captain for the Chippewas in his second uh, or senior season from Grand Rapids, Michigan, named the third captain in two seasons. And he replaced key departure Brendan Nelson there at the forward group. Nelly, if you're listening in here, we miss you dearly in this CMU group. One of the best goal scorers for the Chippewas. Led them all the way to Nationals last season and just came up short against these Wolverines. That's now this one sent back into the zone. Center ice by Rychuk, and he'll pursue there with Jake Stewart. He'll dish this one over the wing to Jamie Newton. Newton starts out, and he'll send this one to the other side there where it's met up by Daniel Colon. Colon at the far side corner holds it. Defended there by Keegan Moore. Back to the point for Stewart. Him and Cologne. Cologne tags out left circle. Waits. Goes the other side. Shoots. And that one went wide. Just near side. Lose in front. They score. Getting there on the rebound was Owen DeVries from Jamie Newton. And the Wolverines are off and running. It's 1-1. Yeah, power play goal for the Wolverines, the second in two games in this series. And Rofe made the initial save, and it popped right out in the slot, and DeVries was there to fire it home on the near side, and it gets the Wolverines back tied up here just a minute and five into the second period. Owen DeVries, the rookie from Rockford, Michigan, scoring his eighth of the season. And as we mentioned, second in points on the team with Andrew Beggs, who's the leading goal scorer for the Wolverines, getting a goal of his own tonight. As right now it's 1-0, is that power play? The Wolverines, their second of the night, they go one for two now, and now they have power play goals in three straight, as Adrian, they also had one, I believe, the other night as well. And they had one on Tuesday, certainly against the Chippewa. So they start out here for the break. Here comes over the line Jordan Cooper. Owen Campbell meets up with him there. Pickpocketed there from a defender. That was William McGraw. Quickly set on net there by Isaac Gibbs and trying to come in to help was Owen Campbell. Clapper from the lie slot there by Cooper. And Cooper's frustrated. Didn't get what he wanted onto it. And it results in a stop. I'll tell you what, that was a great defensive play by the Wolverines, recognizing that Cooper had a wide open lane to shoot that and getting their sticks in front of it, being able to deflect it up and out of play. And that's what Moore Cooper was uh, upset about, the fact that uh, he had a great opportunity, but a good defensive play by the Wolverines shut him off. Now that the puck comes out back. right in front. Right, as Reagan mentioned, Isaac Kims trying to get one there. Rebound chance in front for Cooper, and he tried to go back in, and Heelman saw it the whole way, making both stops. Now to the far side corner, back in front, pickpocketed. Dylan Shelton takes this one away, and he'll set this one rink wide off the boards. It's a race for it, one player by Will Robinson. He'll send it on net, and it's right behind Rope. He didn't see it, the initial one, oh. but it just trickled over that net mooring as... Man, that was a dangerous one. Once again, the Wolverines up to a great first two and a half minutes here in the second, Reagan. Yeah, and that opportunity on Thomas Rofe was one that... Look, uh, uh, almost turned over by Ritter. Was, was one that, as a 
Goaltender, that's one of your worst nightmares when the puck goes behind you and above you and you can't see this as this goes just off sides. And Thomas Rofe's lucky that hit his helmet and popped behind the net. If that hits his shoulder, that's more than likely going to go into the back of the net for a Michigan lead. Unless this game stays at even one apiece for both teams. Oh, and DeVries getting the first goal for the Wolverines on the power play. Earlier it was Andrew Porzondik for the Chippewas, scoring his 10th of the season, and now his 20th point on the season. Good on him, the sophomore from Macomb, Michigan. Now here comes the Wolverines on the attack, and once again, turned over here from Kosnick to Beaker now. Beaker sends it back to the point where Michael Strauss corralled it. It comes free a couple of times and bounces off a couple of bodies, and finally the Wolverines corral this one down, and it's Michael Strauss. Makes one too many deeks on Simon Selly and falls to the ice. Now taking away is Owen Campbell. Campbell's got a one-on-one -on -one here, whether it's St. Andre. St. Andre dishes it to Kosnick, who didn't get it on his blade. Not, not a clean pass there, Reagan, for Campbell to shoot that one, or Kosnick, and much the less, it comes free now to the Wolverines. Yeah, Kosnick had that come in, in at his feet rather than out in front of him, so he had to kind of reach back with his stick, and he couldn't corral it as this is not going to go for icing as Jacob San Andre beats it. Look out, Owen Campbell sent it in front with nobody home, and there to take it is Owen DeVries. He'll send this one off the boards. Pickpocketed by Simon Selly. He moves to the slot. Simon Selly shoots. He scores! Joey Simon Selly. What a move to the high slot. And he makes it a two to one game, and they're going wild here in Morgan. And that's a great play, not only by Simon Selly, but that, that play doesn't happen if Jacob St. Andre does not beat out that icing. He comes back, beats out an icing as he's the first to the puck. His pass was intercepted, but the Chippewas get it back, and Joey Simon Selly finishes the deal with a rifle of a shot to the top left corner, and the Chippewas are back on top here with 16.23 to go. The alternate captain for the Chippewas scoring his seventh of the season, the fifth year senior from Bezville, Illinois, getting the goal right there. And I'll tell you what, it was a beauty, folks. The chips are up two to one. Now back to the point here. Here it comes over the blue line here is William Rathmanner. Rathmanner sent it back deep to the zone where Thomas Rofe, there's the corral it. He'll leave it there for Alex Lasky at the point. Now this one are down low, taken away at the point here. Quick shot on net from Rathmanner, and that one went off a couple of bodies and wide. Now it's back to the near side, far side corner there. Taken there by McComas. He'll leave it there on the dish for Nady when he turned the puck over. The Wolverines on the attack, quick shot on net, just wide, blocker side on Rofe. Back to the point here for Rathmatter. He'll leave it there for McGraw at the blue line. Blue line to blue line. Now at the corner there. Trying to take it as DeVries. Pressured well there by the defending Charlie Hayes. And he'll leave it there for Lasky. They go D to D. And the Chippewas will have a chance to get it out here. They will. Tries a one-touch pass there for Porzonik who sends it deep into the zone. But it comes for a pretty much sure icing. And this one doesn't allow the Chippewas to change, Reagan. Yeah, McComas thought it wouldn't have been an icing as it... Uh, as it was tipped at center ice by Porzonik. I thought Porzonik had tipped it after the after the red line, but it ends up being an icing nonetheless against the Chippewas. They'll have a defensive zone draw here. Here's Andrew Porzondik uh, scoring the goal earlier, the first of the game so far. Third year player from Macomb, Michigan. And you know, one thing about him, his brother Alec plays for the um, Northern Illinois University Huskies, their Division Three team, Reagan, and he's one of four sophomores on the team trying to make his presence known, and he's certainly done it this season now with 10 on the season. That's a quick shot on net, saved initially by Rofe, and it allows the Chippewas to come on the rush. Over the line is Porzonik, has one tonight, looking for another. Tries to deke one player, defending well there is Ethan Crum to get his blade in that stick lane to send this one free to his own his own zone, and now this one corralled in front of the Chippewa bench by Cummins. Now here comes Justin McComas over the way. It's taken here by Brendan Martin, and a couple of players golf swing at it, and it goes up into the moorings, and this will get a stop. It's actually gonna be an offsides, as the puck didn't go up and out of play, but the uh, play was whistled down by the linesman on the near side, who saw, DeVries, who saw pardon me, uh, Jamie Newton go in over the line just a little bit too early, and we'll have a draw just outside the Chippewa line in front of the Michigan bench across the way. We'll get a face-off draw here. Aiden Gazdecki out there oh. against number 15. And hold up. We're going to get a stop here in front as it looks like there might be an issue with the ice here, Reagan. And we had this problem a couple of weeks ago when I was refing a men's league game here. And it was an ice problem right at about the same position right along the blue line. And it, it took us a while to get it fixed up. We ended up pulling some snow from the Zamboni door, and the referees are trying to create some snow across the way. 
So as we pause for a moment here in front of the Chippewa bench, referees trying to assess the ice here as they will need a level playing surface. 14.44 to go in the second period. Chips on top, 2-1 to one from goals of Andrew Porzondik and Joey Simoncelli tagging up for a pair. And I'll tell you what, I didn't have an assist on that one, but I'll tell you what, you called it a great play from Jacob St. Andre to keep it in the zone. And he's my light the lamp tonight, probably getting me a point here. I don't think he gets the assist, though, because his pass was intercepted up through the up through the zone, and that and then the Chippewas ended up being able to uh, regain control of the puck, and it was a nice... It was a nice shot there by uh, Joey Simon Selly into the top corner for the Chippewas as they're still trying to work on the ice across the way in front of the CMU bench. And it's my guess is it's a deep rut that the referees are trying to fill across the way, and that's exactly what we had here. Chippewas allowed them to gather at their own net posting, Reagan. And you talk about Hayden Flynn meeting over there with Austin Ritter. Keegan Moore is over there as well to talk about it. As right now we look at the ice still being worked on here by the referees. Isaac Gibbs over there to help out, squirting the water bottle in there. Maybe trying to freeze it in here. This is a really cold rink, Reagan, so I don't doubt that they can freeze the ice here in, in a very short time if but they it, get something it, on there. It really depends how deep the rut is. The one I had to repair a couple of weekends ago really was that bad that it was a slush puddle the rest of the game. Luckily, players were able to avoid it. They were made aware of it, and it looks like Chippewas are, and the referees likewise are satisfied with the call out of the ice in front of the blue line as we're back underway. Taking that draw there for the Chippewas was Aiden Gazdecki, the freshman from Riverview, Michigan, won that one. And Aiden Gazdecki, we talked about him earlier in the show. Gazdecki, the freshman, and through 17 games, only one goal, four assists. But I'll tell you what, Reagan, he's been excellent on the penalty kill, scored his first goal of the season against Adrian. And he ranks third all-time in assists against for Riverview High School. So a quick shot on net there from Rofe. That one he had to make a save on Ethan Crum, and it comes free behind the net. Now the Wolverines trying to set up another attack here. They've had a decent second period so far, and getting on the board earlier was in the power play there for them. Owen DeVries, and it allowed them to come through center. Now Keegan Moore takes them by himself. He'll poke this one out through center to get it back to the blue line, where he'll go off for a change. Fresh bite has come out here for the Chippewas. Jordan Cooper streaks in, peeling in with Owen Campbell to take this puck away. He'll leave it there for Campbell. It's pickpocketed right away by Ethan Crumb, and he'll send this out to the blue line. Quick shot on net, easily saved by Rofe, turned aside, and he'll leave it there for Campbell, but it'll allow the Wolverines to get a quick change off the ice. Now Campbell streaking up, noticing players are changing, trying to get off on the attack. Owen Campbell tries to go cross ice for Isaac Gibbs, who called for it, and it was easily stopped away there by Owen DeVries. Intercepted here, and here come the Wolverines. Daniel Cologne over the line. Cologne tries to go to the slot, leaves it there for a player. Back to the blue line. He'll turn, waits, shoots! That one's blocked in front off the blade. Isaac Gibbs made the dive for it and it went wide. Owen DeVries now. Scored the goal earlier in this game. Gets it back to the point for Jake Stewart who sends one on net. And that one might have got hit a body in front. Now it's still inside the attacking zone for the Wolverines. Cologne at the near side corner with DeVries. Leaves it down low there. They're going to try and send this one deep. But getting in there was Christopher Martin to send this one. And Isaac Gibbs it allows for him on a one-on-one. -on -one. Isaac Gibbs lead goal score for the Chippewas on a one-on-two. Gets pickpocketed easily there by Nicholas Welch. And it forces the Chippewas to retreat as they'll get fresh bodies out there. Trying to fight in there is number two, Ben Rychuk. Rychuk goes back to the point for Hayes. Hayes can barely keep it inside the zone as the referee had his arm up and he has to wait on it as it would have been an offside there, Reagan. Yeah, that's an unfortunate one. The puck hops over Charlie Hayes' stick and he can't hold the line. And that ends the Chippewa uh, pressure. Owen DeVries chasing in there. Near side corner, ties up there, left there for Griffin. Warden who sent one on net just wide. And now in front of the Wolverine bench there, sending it back deep in is William McGraw. McGraw, one for the Wolverines here. Back to the point there for Rath Manor. Rath Manor waits, turns, blocked in front there by Rychuk with the diving knee. Great job by him there. Back to the point for McGraw. Now it comes free behind the net here as DeVries once again. Back to McGraw. McGraw pulls up, shoots! And Rofe made the initial save and it turned side to the far side corner. Behind the net once again, the Wolverines on a relentless forecheck right now, tiring this defensive bodies for the Chippewas. They'll try and get this one out, and they will. And streaking over the line is Kosnick there with Simon Selly. Simon Selly had a goal earlier in this game, and they get pickpocketed there, but allows them to get a change off there. Coming in is Charlie Hayes. Now Jacob Kosnick takes it himself. 
Kosnick, the freshman star for the Wolver for the Chippewas from Jackson Lima Christie High School. Played with Owen Campbell at Jackson Lima Christie for three seasons. And trying to get some chemistry here. As looked out, Nadu's tied up with a player at center ice. And he dropped his stick there. It looked like he wanted more with Logan Carr. As a quick shot sent on Rofe, turned aside, and it comes far wide. Now it's taking it over here as the Wolverines at the point. D to D there. Rath Manor takes it. Sends one on net. Shoots and Ruff saw it the whole way and made the stop. And we're going to get some more in front of the net. Look out. And it's a bit of roughhousing in front of the Chippewa bench, but it really won't come to anything. Here is uh, that that play with Nadu up at the up at the blue line. Uh, he really just got caught up with Gare. I, I think it was more incidental than anything. If you're looking for pictures of CMU hockey, look no further than Instagram. The fantastic Tristan Hagenstein takes some great pictures, and the best of them can be found at the Instagram Tristan Hagenstein Phot Photography. We'll remind you really quickly of the stakes of this game. The Wolverines playing in their last early season game of the season. As against the Chippewas, they are 0 for 1 the season. Look out, Justin McCombs got a break though. Send it backhander just wide. As in to get everything on it from the streaking defender there, Dylan Shelton. And as I resume my point, the Wolverines playing the last game of the season. They need to win this one to stay in contention for second place as they try to join the rush and keep that effort in front for Rofe. And that one's turned aside to the near side pad. And I can't even get my points in because there's so much transitional action here from both teams. Here's Justin McComas once again. Return home to Camp Michigan on Tuesday where he's from in Arts Gedge Ice Arena and had an assist on that night. Now Brennan Martin sends this one in. The Wolverines, the Chippewas. The Chippewas playing the last three games of the season, including this one. They need to win out for a chance to tie Lawrence Tech in the top spot in the MCHC East. But if they win both games against Lawrence Tech, they will have the tiebreaker for that. So they will win the division and go into conference or the tournament play at the number one seed. The Wolverines trying to manage this one as they send this one deep for a easy stop for Rofe and allows them to get off of the bench. Reagan. But before they turn ahead to uh, Lawrence Tech, they need to win this game first, and right now they're doing a pretty good job. Michigan has been pushing really hard as of late through this first 10 minutes and 2 seconds. The broadcast of today's game is a copyrighted presentation of the American Collegiate Hockey Association and the CMU Club Hockey Network. No uh, reproduction, retransmission, or other distribution of the descriptions or accounts of this game may take place without the express written consent of the ACHA or CCHN. It's only a matter of time for this pressure as Stewart got the backhander there on Rofe. And you know what, Reagan, this is eerily similar to that early second period in on Tuesday when the Wolverines came back in that game to even it up at 2-2 two to two after the Chimboa scored two quick goals in the first. And I'll tell you what, they have a couple of shots on net so far on Rofe, and he's had to be excellent once again. Yeah, Rofe's, they, they've got a lot of bodies in front of the six foot three net minder, and he's been able to make a lot of the saves, but there have been some of those where he's been lucky and they've just hit him rather than him actually making a save. Sent deep into the zone by the captain, Jake Stewart, for the Wolverines. Jake Stewart playing in his fourth season for the Wolverines. The captain played at East Grand Rapids High in 71 games, 16 goals, 31 assists, 47 points. And he had an assist on Shea's goal on Tuesday, Tommy Shea. Now deep into the zone, here come the Wolverines on the attack. Quick shot on net, they score! Will Robinson took the bouncing puck there from the near left, right left circle. And he makes it even in this one. It's two to two. Yeah, and it was a quick shot there from the from the near side, and it was uh, really a play that beat Thomas Rove by the blocker's side, and the Wolverines tie up the hockey game once again here, this time at 10.52. Robinson, the freshman from Cranford, New Jersey, playing his first season for the Wolverines. His eighth of the season now has points in four of his last five games. And he assisted on both of Tommy Shea's goal on Tuesday, and he evens this one up at two. So similar to the game on Tuesday. Look out, another chance they're trying to go up. One here, the Wolverines. And they sent one on net there for Rope. It's crowd in front there, trying to get the tip in front was Griffin Warden. And the relentless four check for the Wolverines continues. 8.48 to go in this second period of play right now. Michigan evens the score up from Will Robinson and Owen DeVries' goals 
earlier on. And now they'll try to defend the Chippewas. The left circle set in front there. That one just wide of the blocker side of Rofe. Back to the point here for Rathman. And the Chippewas got to pick up the pace here. They want to keep the Wolverines out of the net. Now here's Owen DeVries. Trying to set one in front. It was blocked away by Isaac Gibbs. They don't clear this one rink wide to get fresh bodies off the ice. A tired group actually stays out here as Jordan Cooper comes this streak in with Owen Campbell. He has to force Rathman to retreat. He'll go D to D with McGraw. And McGraw will send this one off the boards through center. Owen DeVries joins the rush. Defended by Alex Blasky. Set one in front. And Charlie has knocked that one down. Rolf made a stop with the right pad. And it allows his defenders to come free. They turn the puck over right away. Here's in the front of the net. It was shot attempt by Rathman. Or just missed it off his blade. It allows the Chippewas to come back in the transition. Jordan Cooper turned it over here. Great pressure from the Wolverines. Turning pucks over. Getting shots on net on Rolf. And controlling the game right now in the second period. Here's Owen Campbell. Campbell shoots. Waits off the post. That one went all the way up into the net moorings. Owen Campbell is streaked to the right circle. What a shot on net. Almost made it 3-2. Yeah, and he had a great shot on goal. He beat everything but the post, and it goes up and out of play. But he had Jordan Cooper right in the middle of the ice. If he passes it to him, maybe they can catch a human moving from, from his left to his right. And... Maybe that could yield a better opportunity, but they've got an offensive drawn on the last. Owen Campbell, the freshman from Jackson, Michigan, played under head coach of the Chippewas, Tyler Cataline, at Jackson, Lumen Christie. And I'll tell you what, he was a big motivator for Cataline to come back for the Chips, returning in his third season for the Chippewas, his first since 2017. And I'll tell you what, it's a big one. That head coach on the bench, Tyler Cataline, joined with Dalton Sutherland and Tyler Koff. Trying to help his team out here as they turn the puck over here. Here come the Wolverines quickly over the center ice and into the blue line now. Here coming. Leaves that one there. Drop pass for Jamie Newton who fanned on it. Now behind the net. They try to wrap around in front. Rebound chance. And that one taken by Cumming went just wide. And it's off the netting. And that one, a dangerous chance once again. Reagan, they have done everything they needed to to get pressure on Rofe in this second period. They've been doing everything, including score, but that one, they just miss it as it was a short side shot that came from the bottom of the left wing circle. It was wide of goal, and it ended up deflecting up and out of play off of Rofe. But the Wolverines getting some great pressure as of late. Now here's Koznick. Dish it over to Koznick. Koznick. He'll shoot it on net. Easy save by Hillman. Rockstar angle shot on Hillman, and he almost had that one go off his chest protector. Look out. Simon Selly went out there with number 26, getting it at Logan Gar, and he gets cross-checked there. That could lead to some more as the students here from Central get in the action here, yelling at the players on Wolverine's side, and that might be a cross-check coming up here on Jacob St. Andre Reagan. He was coming in there to help out Simon Selly, but... It was a little bit premature, and we've talked all season about the Chippewas being a physical team, establishing that after the whistle stuff, and you talk about having to stay calm in the final three games of the season, they had to do it right there. Yeah, and the referees let both of those players go, just a few extracurriculars after the play, but yeah, you mentioned they have been a very physical team all year, and it seems as we've gone on in this hockey game, although the last game wasn't very physical, it has been a much more physical contest as of late. Christopher Martin up to Porzondik. Missed on a pass to Nadu, and it's turned over here. Streaking into the zone is Marcelo Monaco, and he gets called for the offside here, so it'll come back in front of the Wolverine bench for the yeah. faceoff. Yeah, it was Michael Strauss who couldn't get back over the line in times. He was caught up in the offensive zone, so the Wolverines will have a draw just outside the Chippewa line here. Stay with us, fans, for the second intermission report as I will give you our out-of-town scoreboards once again. And a couple of other information on the Grand Rapids Griffin second off spirit, among other teams. And we'll go into the zone. Quick shot on there from Porzani looking for a second of the night. It might have gone off the top shoulder on the right blocker side of Heelman and the Chippewas. Even though they haven't had a lot of shots in this period, Reagan, they've been dangerous chances. Owen Campbell and Andrew Porzonic with a pair. Yeah, they haven't been getting a, a couple of good chances on goal, especially right there. It was a good shot on goal, but Hillman was able to get the blocker on it and deflect it up and out of play. Here's the face-off draw from Trevor Callis. Callis playing in his 22nd game of the season, has played it all 22 for the Wolverines. The third-year player from Grand Haven, Michigan has looked out. Here's the Wolverines. Nice backhander move there from Callis, and he couldn't get it just on that, just wide. But, man, what a great move by him to move 
deep into the zone in the low slot. Now he's checked to the boards by the other 15, Justin McComas, and this puck flipped up into the netting from the point by Jake Stewart for the stop. And I'll tell you what, I've seen this group of Callis Stewart along out there with William Rathman are a lot out here tonight, Ring, and it looks like they're getting some confidence, getting more playing time. I believe this is notably a second line group here for head coach Matt Sterling. Yeah, and they've been doing a very good job offensively, especially with that spinorama attempt right there by the Wolverines on their latest attempt. But Rofe has been able to make a couple of good saves, and uh, are we without a puck here? I'll correct myself really quick. Andrew Halliburton and Caleb Stripling, the two coaches on the Wolverine bench over there. And you talk about a group that has had to rally throughout the season. They started off very rough, losing four out of seven games to start but coming back later in the season or losing a couple of games early in the year and rallying back with w big wins over Calvin, notably Michigan State sweeping them in that series and the ACHA version of the uh, war in Michigan. And this one, you know, Michigan trying to stay alive for the second seed so far in the tournament play, Reagan. And they've made the tournament for the past couple of years, the national tournament we're talking about, and will probably be a team we'll see in St. Louis. And they've been a very good team all year. Ranked number nine in the nation outside of the, or just inside that top ten. Now back to the point. Stick deflected there from McGraw. That was Ben Rychuk. And it sends this puck up into the netting with 5-10 to go in the second. Yeah, you know what? The, the, the start of this period was a pretty uh, fast-paced start. We chugged through the first ten minutes like that. But... It's been a very short, it's been a very choppy last couple of minutes. Lots of stops and starts as we get more pucks uh, from uh, Coach Tyler Catalan coming back uh, to the locker room and grabbing some extra pucks for the referee so we don't have to rely on fans to You want to know something in. we only see in the ACHA, and players listening will know this, losing pucks in a game and having to have your head coach <laughs> go grab some more. Now that's Certainly. an ACHA moment if I've ever seen one. As look at a quick shot from Cologne, tried to go glove side on Rofe and he said no with the glove. And yeah, I mean, sending pucks, these pucks have gone flying all night over the netting. And the netting here is a little bit loose. It allows the pucks to go over the sort of end boards, the glass, and fall to the uh, trickling wickets of the um, you know, cement here yeah. on both sides. And, and, and I, I'm certainly, I'm not surprised to see that. A couple of clear attempts from both teams, but, you know, a loose netting here at Martin Ice Arena, and certainly a cold rink probably gets this puck on edge a lot as this one comes all the way back down to the Michigan end where it's an easy icing. 4.51 to go, and you know what, Reagan, I just talked about the stakes of this game a little bit. Michigan comes in tonight, like I said, in their last game of the season, and they've had some big wins this year. They notably tied Lawrence Tech and they've had big wins over Adrian coming back off the loss a couple of days ago. Their fifth game in five days, and yet they look like they've never played better. Yeah, they're actually playing a lot better than I expected. They've played some really good teams as of late, especially Adrian and the Central Michigan team, all ranked in the top 25. And they still look, look very fresh here in the, the last five the, minutes. One of the students on Central Michigan side, Reagan, sent a puck back onto the ice over the netting, and the Chippewas were yelling at a referee to go pick that one up, as you don't want two pucks on the ice in the game of hockey, obviously. So, nonetheless, this play resumes back in the Chippewas' own zone. Daniel Colo trying to take that one, and it's turned over by the Chips. Owen Campbell quickly over the line. Defended there by McGraw by the body. He'll shield him off. He'll go behind the net. Streaking wide. Defended by two Wolverines. Back to the boards there. Just leaves it there and pickpocketed there, but it comes back to center for the Chips, and Austin Ritter sends this one deep into the zone. The Wolverines chip this one back out to the Wol Chippewa blue line, and Austin Ritter has to send this one back through. Austin Ritter, the junior from Alpena, Michigan, still looking for his first goal in his ACHA career and his first point this season as lookout. We got to stop. That Chippewa or that uh, Wolverine rush started with a bit of a miscommunication by Brennan Martin and Isaac Gibbs at the blue line or at, at neutral ice. They were both thinking the other one was going to go for the puck, and instead it was the Michigan Wolverines. It was William McGraw to pick up the puck and work in over the blue line, let a shot go on rope, but he was able to corral it with, with 3.52 to go. Face-off will be taken here by the Wolverines. Number nine, Jamie Newton. Newton, the freshman from Ann Arbor, Michigan, played at Skyline High School, and he scored a hat trick against Oakland University on January 21st. So one of the players that can definitely be dangerous for Michigan. Here's Jacob Kosnick. 
Turned this puck over through center and it was sent back deep into the zone here by the streaking defender, Ethan Crum. Now back to the point. Here's Jacob Kosnick taking it over. Kosnick pickpocketed. Here come the Wolverines the other way. Another player, 13, taking it over there. The Battle of the 13s. Kier Cumming won that one, but the Chippewas sent this one back deeply into the other zone. And I'll tell you what, this is a close game right now with 2-2, two two, Reagan, but the Chippewas right now trying to establish an attack. As here's Jacob Kosnick. Has Jacob St. Andre. Big shot on net. There's Owen Kess, Joey Simon Selly, and look out, we're going to get some more. There's St. Andre in there. He throws a punch. Here we go. He's in there with Logan Carr. And they're throwing it. Fist and cuffs. The rest get in there to stop that one. And it looks like we might go to four on four for this one, Reagan. It was a battle of who could grab the other face mask first. And both of them went about the same time. They're both going to get whistled off. My guess is for roughing for both of them here with 3.04 left to go in the second period of play. A bit of extracurriculars after the fact, and that all started with Simon Zelli crashing the net on a uh, on his opportunity. He got a drop pass from Kosnick in the right circle, moved in, he let a shot go. Uh, he, he'll, he'll, uh, Heelman made the initial save, and then uh, Simon Zelli came in, tried to crash the net, and he got his stick up on uh, high on Heelman. I'll tell you what, this 4-on-4 four four coming up is going to be important, Reagan, because the Chippewas in three of their last six games have scored on a 4-on-4 four four goal. And one of the better teams at that even strength the captains gather, you know, you, you want to talk about a team that with open ice can do a lot of damage, but they need to send out their top groups here. And notably, I've been seeing all over the ice tonight, Joey Simoncelli and Jacob St. Andre, and they'll probably try and get them back out here for this top 4-on-4 four four group. Right now, they've only got a penalty up for the Wolverines, so it may be that uh, number 26, Logan Gare, gets the, gets the additional penalty. So the Chippewas are going to go on the power play here at 1656. Uh, at yeah, so they give Logan Gare, I guess, no incidental penalties. They'll give him the two minute in the box. So going to the sin bin, Logan Gare. Guard, the notable fourth year forward from Williamsville, New York, has 12 points on the season and scored his first goal since home college on October 29th and uh, the other, against uh, Adrian the other night. And fourth all time in club points, assists, and penalty minutes, notably Logan Gar. So the alumni of Canisius High in New York will go to the box and it allows the Chippewas to go to a five on four power play. Their second of the night. Yeah, so on the year, through. on the year, they're eight, they're 17 for 88, 19.5 percent on the man advantage. They've scored on the power play in three out of the last four games. Here's Isaac Gibbs, blew a tire there, but got it just up the wing to Jordan Cooper, who had to send it cross ice feed there from Baker, and it's cleared all the way back down by the Wolverines, negating the, the initial attack of the Chips. They reset in their own end. Isaac Gibbs. Up to Charlie Hayes for a nice stretch pass. Chase will enter the, Hayes wants to the zone. Leaves the end board pass there for Jordan Cooper. He'll swing this one wide to Owen Campbell, where he'll shield this puck off a Wolverine defender there. Streaking in was Ethan Crum. Now Owen Campbell keeps it. Campbell missed on a one-time pass there for Jordan Cooper. Set on net there by Christopher Martin. Rebound chance of trying to backhand it home was Isaac Gibbs and didn't get everything on the back of his blade. And now he takes it back over to the right circle. Shot blocked in front there by Jake Stewart. Isaac Gibbs gets it back. Down low for Cooper. Cooper back to Gibbs. Gibbs winds up. He'll shoot it in front to the end boards. And it comes free off the bounce to Heelman, who will make the easy stop. 54 to go in the Chippewas power play. 157 to go in the period. Yeah, that was a bit of an odd save that Heelman had to make as that puck ricocheted off the end boards. He was a bit out of his crease, so he had to reach behind him to grab that puck. If that comes off with a little bit more speed, it could hit him and land up in the back of the net. Look out, here's Alex Lasky trying to set it in front for Simon Selly, and he was caught up with a defender. Charlie Hayes trying to keep it in the zone, but they have to send it back out for the ice or the offside, and Simon Selly just barely touched it at the blue line, so it will cause the offside, and this faceoff will come back to the neutral zone right in front of us here. Rather, they'll take that this one actually all the way back down to the Chippewa zone zone. Yeah, I think they're going to call this intentional offsides on the Chippewas with 1.47 to go here in period number two. Central Michigan and the Michigan Wolverines all deadlocked at two here in the waiting moments of the middle stanza. 
Simon Sully to take the draw. One of the best face-off men in ACHA this season. Has a 67% success rate, but barely won that one right there as well. Andrew Porzondik missed on the feed. Kosnick had to get his face blocked off there from the cage as that one bounced off his shoulder. And it comes all the way free to the Chippewa zone. Attacking in shorthanded here is the Wolverines. And Reagan, notably, the Chippewas have allowed a couple of shorthanded goals in the last couple of games. Yeah, dating back to the Trine series, they let a shorthanded goal up in three straight hockey games. And it cost them. Icing waved off here. Icing waved off. Taking a clapper with the golf swing there was number three, McGraw. And this one's touched down after the initial stop for a high stick. With four seconds to go in this power play, it'll allow the faceoff to come back in front of us right here in the scoring table. 107 to go in this second period. Wolverines and Chippewas getting a goal each in this period as it was Simon Selly scoring the initial one for the Chips. And then coming back was Will Robinson to tie up the hockey game with eight to go in the period. So we sit right now two to two with one minute to go in the period. And the Chippewas second power play of the night ends unsuccessful. So the chip, so the Wolverines kill this one off and they'll send back out to center. Here's Ken Jim Cologne. Beat Ritter to the puck and he'll shoot this one in front. Score! The one-timer! Owen DeVries gets the feed from Cologne. What a pass. And the Wolverines with 49 to go in the period are on top. 3-2. to two. And that starts with the man back for the Chippewas, Austin Ritter, missing or missing his angle on the puck, and Daniel Cologne beat him to it, and he was able to feed it across to Owen DeVries in the back of the net, and the Chippewas find themselves down by one with 49.8 to go. DeVries, second goal of the night, his 10th of the season. Leads second on the points for the team. With Andrew Beggs, he's inching close to that top spot with Cologne with two tonight. So the Wolverines back on top, three to two here. And the Chippewas will have to rally in the last 35, 34, and into the third as his faceoff's quickly drawn from Heelman's glove. And I'll tell you what now, the Chippewas have allowed two unanswered goals from the Wolverines, and they've had really, pretty much the momentum all period, Reagan. Yeah, Wolverines have really picked up the pace in the latter half of the second period, and Chippewas really haven't been able to get much going. Look out, here they come back over the rush. Owen DeVries has two goals tonight, looking for a third. He'll wait, drops that one in front. They try to go to Cologne, and he just went wide off it and allows the Chippewas to send this one back the length of the ice. No icing as it didn't reach the trapezoid in time. Jordan Cooper comes in under pressure, Stewart. And that was a uh, the, that was a typical Michigan play here in this series. They've Look been out, trying here's to go Cologne streaking in. He's got a one on one with the other ten. Baker makes a nice move to the tries to go to the back end. Baker blocks him off with the body, and that'll just about do it for the period. One last attack there from Cologne. And Baker defends it well, but they can't defend it well enough as the Wolverines get a goal here late in the third to go on top, three to two, headed into the third period. Thanks, Both guys. I am here ringside with Those Daniel Richardson.
Back with you inside Martin Ice Arena for the second intermission report presented by CMHIceHockey.com. And we'll give you a recap of that second period as right now the Wolverines on top of the Chippewas 3-2 for a strong second period where the Wolverines outshot the Chippewas 18-9 in that second. They outshot them first in the, in the first period 20-9. So that now puts the Chippewa shot totals at 8 and the Wolverines somewhere around the 40 range. And Thomas Rolf has had to been excellent so far to only keep this at a three-score game. But that's where we sit as in the second period. To get you started with the scoring metrics, it was Joey Simon Skelly. Joey Simon Skelly scoring off a great feed from Andrew Porzonic. Simon Skelly made a nice move to the slot area to whiff it wide on the glove side, on the blocker side of Heelman to make it a two to one game in favor of the Chippewas, but the Wolverines would come back quickly. It was Will Robinson scoring from Andrew Beggs to make it a tie game at 10.33 of the second period. And this is where the momentum shifted for the Wolverines. They outshot the Chippewas unofficially in that last 10 minutes, not nine to three and you talk about a Wolverine team that on Tuesday had a great second period as well tying up the hockey game in that game they now lead three to two from Owen DeVries goal his second of the night from Daniel Cologne a beautiful feed from Cologne to the low slot area put it backhand here blocker side on Rofe and that one put Michigan on top three to two and to remind you of the stakes of this game for both these teams the Wolverines playing in their Fifth and final game of a five-game stretch where they've played now 23 games on the season. And in the MCHC East, they have one game left. They sit at second place with 16 points, two below the top leading Lawrence Tech Blue Devils. Michigan cannot catch them for the remainder of their games unless Lawrence Tech loses to Central Michigan. And that's notable because Central needs to win out in their last three games, including this one against Michigan, for a chance at the number one seed. Lawrence Tech sits at the top with 18 points. Michigan sits at second with 16. And Central sits at fifth with 12. But they can jump up to third with a win tonight over Saginaw Valley State and Adrian. So Lawrence Tech, no matter what, will either have the one or two seed coming out of this. Michigan looking to get the second seed. And Central looking to jump their way all the way from fifth to first. But they first have to overcome this 3-2 deficit here heading into the third period. As we'll give you really quick our out-of-town scoreboards. And we'll start here with the Detroit Red Wings. As right last night they won 6-3 over the Philadelphia Flyers. Moritz Sider and Lucas Raymond, the notable star rookies for the Detroit Red Wings, had a strong night once again. And a struggling Flyers team that has now coming off of a stretch of losing, I think, seven games in a row where they came back and, and won two previously before this uh, game against the Red Wings. Uh, coming back from the All-Star break, the Red Wings continue to impress with their rookies and the Flyers continue to struggle. Those teams will take on each other as well tomorrow or Saturday, February 12th. That game will be from Little Caesars Arena. Coverage of that game begins at noon Eastern. It's a noon game, and it should be a Bally Sports Detroit game. And you can check your local, local listings for that one. The next game they'll have will be against the Minnesota Wild on Monday, February 14th. And that one's set for an 8.30 puck drop. And that one will be from Minnesota for that one. As right now we sit in the Wolverines on top, 3-2 to two over the Chippewas, heading into the third period. We'll get you set for action here. Join me and Reagan Cleese back in the booth in a moment. But we'll step aside. You're watching Central Michigan Hockey here on CCHN.
You're looking live at the start of third period action as the Chippewas come back down on the ice here to rejoin the contest against the Michigan Wolverines right now down two to three Reagan after a strong second period from Michigan where they scored two unanswered after Simon Selly's goal and the Chippewas have to rally once again in a comeback. Yeah, talking with backup goaltender Joel Drucker during the intermission, we, the Chippewas have been outshot at 20 to nine and 19 to nine in the first two periods. It has been a domination at least on the score clock by the Michigan Wolverines and it's let's hope the Chippewas can turn those tides here in the final 20 minutes. We look back to center ice Owen Campbell there will take the draw against Owen DeVries who has two goals tonight already and looking for more as we're back underway here third period action begins with the Wolverines on top. Here they come back through center now, trying to start on the attack. Rath Manor left it there for Warden. Griffin Warden gets checked hard to the near side corner there from a streaking Christopher Martin. As this one's sent back behind the net, the attack is rejoined for the Wolverines. The Chippewas have gone down from two unanswered goals here, and they were down in the game against Michigan as well. Um, or rather, they were up 3-2 to two in that game, but had to come back and win it in overtime, 4-3 to three on Tuesday night. So they're going to have to rally once again. It's lookout. Streaking in is Trevor Callis. A shot. Rolf didn't see that one initially, and it just streaked wide. A dangerous chance there for Trevor Callis there. What a job by the Wolverines, or by, yeah, by Michigan to just get the pressure on Reagan, and they're just continuing right where they left off in the second. Chippewas just seem like they're scrambling here in the defensive end. They can't get anything going up by ice. Looked out. We'll get an offside here from streaking eyes of Gibbs, and this one will send it back to center ice. And Reagan, we've seen the Chippewas come into a third period struggling like this, losing the physical battle, losing the puck possession. What's got to happen for them to turn this around? They've got to be able to get shots on goal. They can't be. They can't play lackadaisically defensively. And there's a long shot on goal. Not sure if it'll count toward Hillman's stats, but Alex Lasky getting something on goal there. The Chippewas just need to play a faster hockey game. They're playing like they're behind, but they're not playing with the effort that you would expect when a team's behind. Chips will need to mount some effort as Jacob Kozik trying to take this feed from Callis, and it allows a streaking forward to move in, but down hard on the ice is Kosnick. And it looks like it get a stoppage here, but could have been an offside. And you know, you talk about a um, an effort thing for the Chippewas, and we've seen them struggle to play a full three periods. Notably against Tryon, they allowed a three goal deficit for them to come back and force a tie to try and Thunder in that game. And, and you know, Reagan, it, it seems like it's just got to be frustrating for head coach Charlie Catalan on that bench to see this from his team once again. Chippewas not down in this game right now, though. They have 18.25 left to go to answer. And they're going to need one quickly here. So Jacob St. Andre moves in on the streak. Gets turned over there from Dylan Shelton, and he'll shield this puck back out to center. Up the wings there for Jake Stewart. Struggle weight on a centering feed there, intended for Andrew Beggs, the leading goal scorer, but he just didn't get it off his blade for the shot. Alex Lasky pursues him. The Wolverines playing fast. Quick shot tonight, still loose in front. Under a body, trying to get a shot off, and the referees whistle this one down. As there was a player sitting on it, that was Will Robinson. Has a goal earlier tonight. There's going to be a penalty here. I believe it's going to be on the Chippewas here. As Simon Selly is headed to the box here at 2:01, he's going to go off, presumably for a cross check here. And the Wolverines are going to go back on the man advantage. Wolverines right now one for two on the night on their power play chances. They're third here tonight, and they win the opening draw from Owen DeVries. Here's Daniel Colon moving with it. Back down low there for Robinson. Those two have a pair of points tonight. Colon back to the point for Stewart, the captain. Back to Colon left circle to Stewart. Stewart winds up and shoots, and a nice block there from Keegan Moore to lay out the body. He gets back up. Now to Cologne, to the left circle, gets some time and space, gets a shot off, and just off the right shoulder of Rofe to go up and out of play here. Yeah, Rofe doing a great job to stick that right shoulder up and into the path of that puck. If he doesn't get that shoulder to it, that puck 
is in behind him and instead it's up into the netting that rims the boards and we'll have a draw as a whistle down here referees talking with the Chippewas bench They're complaining about something not sure about what but nice face off draw win from Gazdecki sends it the length of the ice and allow the Chippewas to reset and kill off some time on this penalty kill Wolverines third of the night Here's pulling up with it on the wing. Jamie Newton left it there for Owen DeVries, who streaks in. He'll turn wide, wide. Back to the point there for Newton. Goes D to D there with Stewart. He'll tag up with Newton again. He'll try to send it in front. It's blocked in front by Ritter. And this one sent through the center. A quick shot on Rolf. He makes the initial stop. Rebound chance. They score. Jamie Newton off of DeVries' initial shot. Makes it 4-2. to two. Their second power play goal of the night. And they lead by two. Yeah, their second power play goal of the night. And Rolf, there's not much he can do on that one as the shot came from the middle of the slot off of a blocked body out in front. And it skips by his blocker. And Jordan Cooper still talking with the referee in front of the bench. Chippewa's bench is not happy about something. I really don't know what it is. But either way, they're down two now with 17.05 to play. Jamie Newton, the rookie from Ann Arbor, scores his sixth of the season. Had an assist on Gar's goal on Tuesday. Now points in two of his last three. And Owen DeVries, his third point on the night with two goals and an assist on that one. And they lead this one by two. His look out, the chip was trying to answer in front. He didn't have it and trying to get in there was Jordan Cooper with some urgency. Back to the slot for Campbell. That one turned aside there by Huben. It might have been blocked in front though, however. And here they come, joining the rush over the way. Logan Gar shoots it on net, and Rolf made the right pad stop. The Chippewas need to pick up the urgency here. Still down with Simon selling on the box. They still, or they still have the penalty on the clock, but they did resume five on five here. As here's Owen Campbell, tries to send it deep into the zone. The Chippewas got to get some puck possession here, as the Wolverines are just absolutely hammering them on the forecheck. Now here's Owen Campbell over the line. There with Jacobson Andre. They turn the puck over back to the blue line. And once again, the Wolverines negate any chance of an attack. And Chip Reagan, that's happened a couple times now in this period. And it doesn't help that the Chippewas aren't trying to get the puck deep. They're trying to make plays at the blue line, and their passes are getting intercepted. They're getting knocked off the puck, etc. And the Wolverines are just back up ice as qu or quicker than you can say the Wolverines are back up ice. Monaco sent a shot quick on Rofe. And we don't have to remind you the stakes could never be higher in this game. Central trying to make their bid for a national title run. Ranked sixth in the nation against the number nine ranked Wolverines who are both headed into tournament play trying to find momentum and improve their seeding heading into that one. But right now the Wolverines look like they're the better team so far through the first 47 and a half minutes. As here look a quick shot on that from the slot there by Cologne. It's still loose in front and it finally comes free to the point for Stewart. Music still playing here, and finally Julian Johnson in the box sends that one off. The music here, and we'll resume play. Jacob Kosnick now to the far side corner, trying to get some urgency for the Chippewa. Turn the puck over, pickpocketed by Cologne, and he'll send it back out to center. Drop pass there for DeVries. He'll tie up with Warden. Warden sends it in front for DeVries on the one-timer, and he just didn't get the tip on the blade. Now back to Stewart. Stewart. We'll pull up with a shot. Ruff made the stop at the initial time. DeVries on the rebound, and Ruff made another easy stave with the blocker. Now trying to get out of the zone is Keelan Baker. Skating deep, his team urging him on to get going with it. Cy Andre couldn't handle that one as he would have been called for a hand pass to himself, and that one allows Michigan to regain possession with 14.54 to go. Here's over the line, Callis. Lost an edge there, but got in there deep for Warden. Now Warden and him tie up in the corner. The Wolverines hammering right now on the forecheck once again. He's rough to the boards by Simon Selly. Now back behind there for Lasky. Simon Selly to the corner with Warden. Warden gains possession of the puck in the top of the right circle. Drops it there to the point. Quick shot on the net. Blocked in front, initial time. Save. Rebound, second chance. And Rofe said no with the glove there. Handling that puck down as it was loose in front. Yeah, good composure there by Thomas Rofe to maintain his sight on the puck and eventually uh, cover it when it came to him. And a bit of a shoving match that ensued in front of Thomas Rofe, but no penalties will come, will come after that. And the referee's still talking about something to the side of Rofe's net. Not sure if that's a continuation of the conversation the Chippewas bench was having with either, it was having with the referees earlier in this period. 
Puck comes free to center. Callis takes it back here with McComas. Here's Charlie Hayes taking it back over. Tries to send a deep with McComas. They'll enter the attacking zone with Keegan Moore. And Moore has to go one on two there. To the other side, Porzonic missed on the tape. Comes back to center, streaking it over the line. Here comes number 18, Andrew Beggs, the leading scorer for the Wolverines. Tries to take it over, drops it there for his forward crumb, and he'll get up the wing there for Robinson. Robinson defended it with the other number 12, Lasky. Set it in front there, it came to Callis. Callis deeped one play in the 15th battle for it. McComas, and he wins that one and gets it all the way back to Moore at the near side corner. Now Moore will hold with it. 13-44 to go in the second game of this series between Michigan and Central Michigan. Both teams in must-win scenarios here to improve their seeding going into the MCHC tournament. Here's Justin McComas over the one-on-three there. Doesn't get any help as the Chippewas get a change, but back through center, it's sent back deep by Brendan Martin, the captain for the Chips. Now back behind the net, the Wolverines collect with it. Jake Stewart up the wing. He'll set it there off the boards for Cure Cumming. Cumming takes one player nicely. Defended well, gets it on net, but Rope sticks that one aside. Ben Rychuk came in to help him out. Now they tie up in the corner. Hayden Flynn off the board, sends it back to center when Jamie Newton chases after it. Drops it there for the captain, Stewart. Stewart sent this one deep, but it was blicker, blick blockered away there by Austin Ritter. And now back to Ritter. Steps up on a man. Big hit there on Dylan Shelton. And that's going to get the Chippewa some momentum right there. Here's Brendan Martin now. Tries to get it off the wing there to Rychuk where it was intercepted. Stewart sends it back out to center ice. Up to the assistant captain, Kier Cumming of the Wolverines. Now here's Keelan Baker now. Baker over to Flynn. Missed on the pass. The Chippewas miss on a couple passes through center ice. And it allows the Wolverines to change. And both teams will get changes back out on the ice. Owen Campbell now takes it on alone. He'll have a one-on-one -on -one with Griffin Warden. Turn the puck over and they send it back deep. The Chippewas have to get some attack going here. They haven't had a shot on Heelman in the last five minutes. Now here comes Keelan Baker back to retrieve it. He'll take it low. Take it down hard to the ice by the other 10, Daniel Colon. And now behind the net, Isaac Gibbs corrals with it. Here's Gibbs. Back through center now. Here's Ethan Crumb now. Back through center. Once again, it's set on net by Ro to Rofe. And with 12.03, we get to stop Reagan. Tough sequence there for the Chippewas. Yeah, at this point in time, they really aren't playing like they want this hockey game. There's 12 minutes and three seconds left. They're playing lazy hockey. They just haven't been able to get the puck on net and to get the puck out of the zone. And now look out. Here's Kalan. Won the faceoff draw. Got it back to his D-man, Rath Manor. Set it on net. Rebound in front. Owen DeVries trying to bang it home for his third of the night. Back to the point here. Quick shot on that. Wolf made the right pad stop. And it finally is corralled by a Chippewa, Jordan Cooper. Sandra sent it out of the zone. The Wolverines once again on the forecheck relentless. Owen Campbell ties up there with the defender in there, Ethan Crumb. And Owen Campbell will send it back to the zone. Tipped away here. Turned over from Kalan, but he didn't get a shot on as Owen Campbell defended him well. Charlie Hayes behind the net. Sent in front there for Wolverine. Cooper just slashed the player at the near side corner to no call there. Back to the point for Rath Manor. Ooh. We're going to get a whistle here for that one. And it looked out. Jordan Cooper is talking over there with Rath Manor. Jordan Cooper's got to keep him, his composure here. He's been out of a couple of games for post whistle scrubs this season. And they certainly don't want him to go down right there. Yeah, and to be honest, Cooper probably should have gotten a holding penalty along the half wall, and that's what Cologne was arguing about with the referee, but that offsides call didn't look to be offsides. It looked like the Wolverines had kept the line, but the referees ruled that it, or the linesman ruled that it had gone out of the zone, and so the Triple Ones get a lucky break, both in that Cooper doesn't get called for the holding, and the Wolverines now have a draw outside the zone. Simon Selly won it, got it up the way to St. Andre, and Kazik took a golf whack swing at it where it went over into the bench for the assistant coach of the Wolverines. 11-18 to go in this third period. Reagan, I don't think the Chippewas can say that it's for a lack of effort. They're down in this game right now but it's certainly in favor of the Wolverines who have all of the ice in their tilt right now. At least as of late, it certainly has been a lack of effort. Players are going to the bench, and it might be the fact that they're tired, which it's odd considering they're, the, they're not the team who's playing their fifth game in five nights. Look out, they're gonna need some here. Jacob St. Andre scores! By light the lamp, St. Andre scores for the right circle! And how about that for effort? The Chippewas are back within one! <laughs> 
You said they needed something, and there's Jacobson Andre firing a puck home. He went far side on a shot from the right, from the bottom of the right wing circle to pull the Chippewas back within one at 857 of the third. St. Andre's second point of the night, his ninth goal of the season. The fifth year senior from Riverview, Michigan with an absolutely must needed goal to get the Chippewas back in this game. And trying to rally a comeback in this one with 10.57 to go. We'll get the quick icing here. Touched up by the Michigan defender, Ethan Crum. And how about that one? Jacob St. Andre loves that area, Reagan, at the right circle. And he really went bar down on that one on Heelman. He and, and Simon huge. Selly have loved the bottom of the circles this year. They've gotten a couple of goals. My thought goes back to the Michigan State game in which Jacob St. Andre scored a beautiful goal from the bottom of the right circle to put them up. Now Porzondek. Here's Porzondek sending it deep into the zone. Keegan Moore will chase after it there. He's pursued in with help. And Austin Ritter gets it back to the point. Quick shot on that just wide. And Porzondek takes it back in the corner. Send it in front with nobody home. And Thomas trying to streak in there. Now back to Moore. The chip was getting some attack here in the last two minutes here. It's turned over now and sent it back out to center ice. It's Griffin Warden. He'll tag up on the way with Daniel Kalan. Kalan on a one on three. Whacked away at it from the Chippewas. And here's the top group joining up with it. Justin McComas over the blue line to the right circle. Goes in the slot, shoots on net, and he runs into Hillman. Nets off its postings, and McComas got the shot off, but a save by Hillman to keep this game at 4 to 3. And there's going to be a penalty on Nolan DeVries as he goes to the box. The Chippewas are going to go back on the pass. Power play here uh, at uh, nine at nine forty-five. It's going to be Owen DeVries off for a tripping penalty here, so the Chippewas get another opportunity on the power play. This will be their second opportunity of the night. It's won by the Chips, the biggest face-off and power play coming up here for the Chippewas, trying to answer with a goal most recently by Jacob San Andre. They have ones by Joey Simoncelli and Porzondic tonight. Here's Martin, over the wing, shoots Baker! He just sent that one wide on the streak as it might have been blocked in front by a body. Back down low for Simon Selly. Back to the point here, and Jacob St. Andre has to reset and corral it from the defender, Jamie Newton. Tags up with Brendan Martin, the captain from Novi, Michigan, in his sixth season, looking to take his Chippewas back to the national tournament for the third straight season. Here's Jacob Kosnick over the line now. Sends it deep into the zone. Baker Crow with it. Martin got a shot on that, and Hill and made the chest protector save to turn that one aside. Martin tried to send one in front once again, but it was blocked. Here's Simon Selly, has one tonight. Right, looking for another. Back down low there for Baker. Or Kosnick. To the slot for Martin. Rebound in front. And it comes free all the way to the right point. And Simon Selly has to reset it. Great first minute of the power play for the Chips. Yeah, a great first minute. Now look out here. Simon Selly. He Simon had Selly had pickpocketed there from number 13. Here coming. And he sends this one the length of the ice. And the Chippewas. A little bit of pep in their step in the last four minutes, Reagan. Certainly. Ever since that goal, they've been able to get uh, a few more shots. They've been cycling the puck well in the offensive zone, especially on this power play in which there's 43 seconds left. Here's poor Zondick. Has one goal tonight. He'll turn wide with it. Send it in front to the far side. And he had a wide open back door there with Isaac Gibbs. Now I'll take it down hard to the ice of St. Andre, and he'll have to corral this one back. Poor Zondick will. 27 seconds to go with the Chippewas power play. And a must-win scenario in their last three games of the season to catch Lawrence Tech at the top of the MCHC East. Here's Isaac Gibbs. Lee score. Back to Poor Zondick. Shoots one time. Rebound in front. Wide open net for Hayes. It doesn't go. It doesn't go. It goes wide. Hayes trying to get on the back door. He had a wide open net and couldn't bang it home. The Chippewas power play in three seconds will end. And here's Jordan Cooper in the corner. What a chance for the Chips. And Hayes really just couldn't get his stick free of the defenseman out in front. Quick shot from Martin at the point. Christopher Martin. And that one was blocked in front off a skate. Greatest chance there for the Chippewas. Hillman had his streak over to the other side. And he was lucky as the defender's a shot on net from Christopher Martin. Glove save from Hillman. And it'll finally call a whistle here. And what a last two minutes for the Chips. What a last two minutes indeed. They had their best chance of the hockey game right in front of the net as Heelman reached just in time to get that puck as it was slowly trickling in. It had deflected off of Hayes' skate out in front and he had to reach back and he barely got it below before it crossed the goal line. Here's Rychuk. Puck is whistled down here. We're going to stop. 
on with. 7.51 to go, Reagan. Do you sense a little bit of the momentum shifting here? A little bit, and especially if the Chippewas can keep up this play a little bit. They've been, they've had the momentum in the last two minutes, but I'm guessing partly because of the power play. Here's Ritter with a shot. It was blocked in front just wide. And I'll tell you what, with that power play, it certainly helped them out. In that category, right took sent it in front, and Hayden Flynn couldn't beg it home. Chippewas with much more urgency, sensing that must-win scenario here, and they're picking it up on the Wolverines. Here's Brendan Martin, the captain. We'll send this one wide. It almost was hit in the head by number 18, Andrew Beggs, and we're going to get a whistle. It's going to be offsides here on the Michigan Wolverines. We're going to deem it intentional offsides. So the, puck, the puck is going to be dropped all the way back in their own zone. Seven minutes, 30 seconds to go. Back in the third, or here in the third, and... Devin, we've seen one goal deficits, or more than one goal deficits be overcome in the last seven minutes of a hockey game. Uh, we have. You're referring to a couple of series against, notably Calvin, Trine, not to mention even Adrian for the, the win there on a one goal deficit or two goal deficit on the road. And the ship was trying to rally the comeback here. They got a goal earlier from St. Andre and looking for another on this four check. Far side corner, taken here by McGraw. He'll go D to D over there with Jake Stewart. Stewart will send this one out of the zone after Robinson took it over, had a goal earlier tonight for the Wolverines, and he'll crowd this one, golf swing at it all the way into the zone, and it goes up into the protective netting for a stop. 6.59 to go in Oregon. We've talked about it all night, the relentless four check of the Wolverines, and they've kind of been stagnant in the last four minutes, but Dalton Sutherland's been on that bench for the Chippewas, urging them to pressure more. And when they did that in the first period on the man defense, they were doing it much better. Now here's Justin McComas over center. Into the attacking zone with Keegan Moore off the wing. Moore turned it over, and Keelan Baker and, and Christopher Martin had to tag up. Defended well there by Colon, however. Colon wins a one-on-two battle there, and he's got someone on the wing there. Now they're pressuring the, Wolf, the Chippewas. McComas comes back to retrieve it, and he'll be pickpocketed by Rathmatter. Gets it up the wing there for Warden. Warden the left circle, winds up a shot. Five holes trying to go on Rofe, and he makes the save for no rebound. Yeah, if I had to chalk this game up to anything, it would really be the neutral zone battles. Michigan has, despite their opportunities in the offensive end, they've won the neutral zone battles, not allowing Central Michigan to, to, Michigan to gain that zone, and especially cutting off those uh, long stretch passes that the Chippewas are so fond of. And that's pretty much what's done it for them, along with their offensive dominance. Here's Owen DeVries, three points on the night. Trying to get another. Here's Alex Lasky of the line, took it over here. Left it there for St. Andre and sent deep into the zone there by Jacob Kosnick. And he has to corral this one at the far side. Kosnick back to the point. He'll send this one deep once again. Settled down here by Griffin Warden. Warden turned the puck over and it's kept in by Charlie Hayes. Back in front there for Simon Silly with nobody home on the back door. And there over there, Charlie Hayes had to corral in, but it allows Daniel Colon to reset it. Gets up to the wing there with Ethan Crum. Crum will streak this one deep into the Chippewa zone this time, where Kosnick defended well there from Warden. Has to tag up there with Alex Lasky. Lasky will flip this puck back over the blue line. It'll be taken over by Jake Stewart across the wing. Couple of back and forth players from both teams turned over in front. Shot on net. No, none coming. Jamie Newton had a nice block in front. Sends one in front. Off the skate. Almost went on the blocker side of Rofe off Cosmic skate. And just luckily streaked wide. Alex Lasky crowd back with it. Nice Chip Walsh will get a change. Nice and it's going to be waved off here as the Wolverines get a long stretch pass. Look out. Here coming into the line here. Brendan Martin comes back to retrieve it. Tags up with Isaac Gibbs, the freshman from Novi. The pair of players from Novi, Michigan, trying to rally their team back. 5-0-2 to go in this third period of play between Michigan and Central. And Central right now in a must-win scenario with these final three games against the Wolverines and two against Lawrence Tech. Here's over the line. Isaac Gibbs, long shot from the top of the left circle at the point. And Ethan, or Ben Hillman makes the easy stop. If you're looking for game reports, stats, schedules, and more, take a trip to CMSHicehockey.com. There you can find those and much more, including player information, recruiting information, apparel, and more. That's C-M-I-C-H-I-C-E-H-O-C-K-E-Y.com. Only 4.50 to go in this game, Re Reagan. you got to think about pulling the goaltender here soon for the Chippewas. They cannot rally in these last four and a half. I think you give it a little bit more time Here's for Coach Cataline. Jordan Cooper. You're right, Reagan. Give him a little bit more time. Rofe 
an excellent goaltender. He knows when to pull him. Jordan Cooper. Over to Isaac. Yes! Short side! That might have rung off the post. We heard it. And back to the point for Ritter. Try another try. And that one just blocked in front off the netting. Isaac Gibbs trying to shoot from the same spot St. Andre scored earlier to no avail. A great shot there for the Chippewas. They almost even up the game a matter of inches. And they're going to get an offensive zone draw. Chippewas need to be need to get all the draws they can get, especially in this offensive end. They've been struggling with it as of late. Let's see if they can do it here. Quick shot from Porzonic after McComas won the draw, and Hillman turned that one aside. Here come the Wolverines the other way on the transition. Robinson sends it deep into the zone there. It'll be intended there once again there. Robinson picks up his own pass deep into the zone, and he's pressured off by the other 15. Justin McComas, 15 on 12 there. Keelan Baker up the wing to Moore. Keegan Moore sends it deep into the center ice zone for McComas, but it was turned aside. 3.57 to go in the third. We'll let you know if the goaltender is pulled here. Justin McComas, drop pass there for Porzonic. Porzonic gets slashed in the face, and look out, we're going to have a power play coming up here for the Chippewas. And that one is going to be huge with 3.49 to go in the game. It's going to be a hooking penalty on... It's it's Dylan Shelton. He hooked Porzontic as he came in over the line. Chippewas are going to get a power play here. They've scored. Uh, power play coming up here, and the stakes could not be any higher. Joey Simon Selly blocks one in front. Got it back down low for Baker, who was knocked down to the end of the ice. Back to the point for Martin with a clapper. That one just streaked wide. And Heelman makes the glove stop there off the end board bounce. Took an odd hop off of the end boards there. That penalty coming at 16. Yeah, pardon me, at 16 11 of this third period triplative zone draw. Here's Brendan Martin. Back down low for Kosnick. Turn the puck over. It's the other side here. Send it out of the zone, turned over here to the low slot. Kosnick got that rebound in front. St. Andre looking for his second. Still has it. Trying to go short side, and he turns around wide. Still has the puck in possession here. 318 to go. St. Andre drop pass there for Martin. Turned the puck over. Schmeichel Strauss defended it well, and the Chippewas have to reset. 120 to go in their power play. Joey Simon Selly taken down to the ice here. The fans aren't happy about that one. Brendan Martin corrals this one. He'll reset. Gets it up the wing here for Simon Selly. Sent deep into the zone. Logan Gare takes it. Martin missed on that one. Short-handed. Here come the Wolverine. It's Jamie Newton. Newton look for another. Just turned that one. Blocker side wide on Rove. Martin takes this one over. 57 seconds to go in their power play. 2.42 to play. Jacob St. Andre just offside there with streaking in was he had Simon Selly there on his wing, and the faceoff will come back out to center Reagan, and that's so important because every detail matters now for the Chippewas. Yeah, and they can't afford that. They got 53 seconds left on the man advantage. We, uh, I, I, I would assume that Coach Tyler Catalan's going to wait until, uh, until the penalty has expired to pull Thomas Rove, especially if the Chippewas can get some pressure in the offensive end here. Here's Jordan Cooper now. Big face-off win by the Wolverines. Sends it back to center. Here's Christopher Martin. He's got his brother out there with him. Or he did, but he replaced him back off the bench. Here's Christopher Martin streaking wide. Send it in front from Porzani! It's loose in front! And Hillman made the initial stop. It didn't have to make a second. Clapper from Hayes blocked in front there. The Chippewas with some nice pressure. Back in front for Isaac Gibbs. Rebounded here comes the Cooper at the left circle. 2.09 to play. Cooper Drop pass there for Porzondek. Porzondek back in front for Hayes, and he missed on that one to tape. It allows the Wolverines to clear this one the length of the ice. The Chippewas power play is going to end in 10 seconds. Here's Isaac Gibbs. They've got to start quickly on one more transition. Isaac Gibbs, a freshman from Novi, takes it himself into the attacking zone. The left circle gets pickpocketed there. Jordan Cooper helps him out and goes all the way into the glove of Hillman. 145 seconds to play, and the Chippewas do not answer with that power play. Yeah, they fail to convert on the man advantage, and they do get a couple of good opportunities, but Hillman played playing very well in goal tonight as Tyler Catalan's motioning to Rofe. 
Saying, watch us. And Here's they'll Austin and Ritter. Wide up the point, blocked in front. It allows a rush the other way. Here's Griffin Ward at one on one with Brendan Martin. Goes to the backhand, near side, and Rofe easily turned that one aside. 1.30 to go in this hockey game here. The Wolverines on top, 4 to 3, after goals from Owen DeVries, Will Robinson, and Jamie Newton. Here's Austin Ritter and Simon Selly. 1.20 to go. Rofe will motion to the bench. Can't go off, however, as it's sent back deep here. The Wolverines with some nice defense. Chippewas can't uh, corral the passes. They're tape to tape, but they're just bouncing off of their sticks like it's a trampoline, and that's been the cause of a couple of turnovers. Here's Martin. Got it up to Kosnick. They've got one minute to play. Rofe is motioning to the bench. There he goes. Rofe off the bench. It's six on five here. Here comes out off of it Isaac Gibbs. And the oh, you're going to call a penalty on Simon Selly here. Simon Selly He's the one that got hit in the head. The what the zone. heck are you doing? Simon Selly took a controversial hit there, and they're going to call this one on the forward. Had a goal earlier tonight. They're going to send him off here with 50 seconds to go in the hockey game. That is a rough call on Simon Selly. I don't know what the referee saw. Simon Selly's the one that took the hit up high. This is an inexcusable call by the referees. With 50 seconds left, Chippewas, that's basically going to stop the, stop the momentum. So it'll allow the faceoff to come all the way back to the Chippewas' own zone. They're going to have 50 seconds to work with. Power play here for the Wolverines, trying to improve to 13-7-1 and 2 on the season and match Lawrence Tech in points at the top of the MCHC East. Here's Kalan, back to the point. Quick shot there. Chippewas came into the night with a must-win scenario for the number one seed in the MCHC East. If they lose tonight, their only chance is at best second place. And even at that, they will be even with the Wolverines in points as here now a high stick is negated here. And we're going to get another stop here. So 37 seconds to go. The Wolverines in their final regular season game of the year. Trying to hold on for the regular season. Get into tournament play. Trying to get that number two seed. They cannot catch Lawrence Tech right now as Tech has the tiebreaker with a win and a tie over them. So if Wolverines can hold on here, they will lock up at the very least third place going into tournament play. And for the Chippewas... They're going to have to reassess themselves before a hard two-game back-to-back series home and home against Lawrence Tech. Here's Keelan Baker back to retrieve it with 27 seconds to go, and they're actually going to whistle this one once again, and they're going to pull Rofe off the bench here as it's called for an icing the other way. They're going to send him off there. It'll allow the Chippewas to go back five on five to the right circle. They have to win the face-off draw for any chance to tie this hockey game up. Five on five, empty net pulled here. The Wolverines have a chance to ice it here. Taking the face off draw will be Owen DeVries. And we're gonna get a quick timeout here from Coach Catiline. And we'll give one break as well. You're listening and watching live for the final several seconds of this one between Central Michigan and Michigan. We'll be right back. Back with you inside Martin Ice Arena for the final 27 seconds. Michigan on top, 4-3, to three, trying to hold on against the Chippewas where they scored three unanswered goals to go up in the game heading into the third. St. Andre answered with six minutes to go, but the Chippewas at 27 seconds find themselves down by one with a five-on-five five empty net pulled as Michigan has a power play. Biggest face-off draw of the game there, won by the Wolverines. Can't win and they'll the come it back through center ice. Here's Kier coming to ice it, coming on net, blocked there by Martin with 17 to go. To the far side, Owen DeVries tied up there. He'll get it with coming there. 12 seconds to go, empty netter. Just sent wide there by Kalan. Seven seconds to go in the hockey game. The Wolverines holding on the last four seconds. Here's Cooper. 
Needs one more stretch pass, one second to go. Isaac Gibbs will take a shot too late. And the Michigan Wolverines come back to Martin Ice Arena and even this season series at one and take this one four to three, the final here from Martin Ice Arena. Tonight, two goals from Owen DeVries, Jamie Newton, and Will Robinson to take it for the Wolverines. We'll step aside and come back with the post-game show here from Martin Ice Arena. Final score here, Wolverines four, Chippewas three.
Back with you inside Martin Ice Arena for the postgame show presented by CMHIceHockey.com. The final in this one, Michigan takes it over Central Michigan 4-3. to And after a strong second period, put the Wolverines on top 3-2. to They answered one more in the fourth or third to get up 4-2. to Chippewa's answered with a St. Andre goal late there, but it wasn't enough to get them back in the game, Reagan. They fall in this one. Yeah, it was really just sloppy play all night, much akin to the to what happened on Tuesday, but with a different result. The Chippewas just didn't look like they wanted the hockey game. They were lackadaisical all night. They were making passes. They were turning the puck over. And really, I said it in the broadcast, but Michigan won the neutral zone. And Central Michigan is so fond of those long stretch passes that if any teams can shut them down in the neutral zone, they're they're almost guaranteed to win the hockey game because that's how, how Central Michigan's offense uh, thrives, and it, it really just didn't work out for them as it typically doesn't, and it's a rough loss for the Chippewas, especially coming off that overtime loss and getting the first goal and having the lead twice in this hockey game. We'll take a look at our key players. Recap of the night, Brendan Martin and Isaac Gibbs did not get on the board for the Chippewas tonight. Michigan side, number 20, Tommy Shea did not. Jake Stewart, the captain for the Wolverines, played well all night defensively. Both sides of the ice really didn't record a point in this game officially, but nonetheless, a great outing from the captain, Wolverine. Yeah, Stewart has been phenomenal, not just only in this game, but also in this entire series. He he was one of the he was he got the assist on the game tying goal that sent the game to overtime on Tuesday. But he also just played phenomenally tonight, both defensively and offensively. He's a really good two-way player for the Michigan Wolverines, and uh, come playoff time, he should be a really big component to their success. Taking a look at our ahead of schedules, Central Michigan falls to a record of 12-4. 0-5 oh, on the season. They fall in a 5-3, 0-2 in division play. And Michigan improves to 13-7, 1-2, 8-2, 0-1 to finish out their regular season. And Reagan, they have now secured the second seed in the MCHC East with this win tonight. Lawrence Tech has that number one spot locked up with 18 points. Tied with Michigan technically, but Lawrence Tech has the tiebreaker with a win over Michigan earlier this season, Reagan, your thoughts? Yeah, and that that makes the highest that's, that's, that the Central Michigan Chippewas can get is third place right now. Adrian sits above them with 13 points. They still have one game uh, left to play in this regular season. Uh, Saginaw Valley State has completed all their uh, regular season MCHC contests. They sit at 13 points as well. So with a win in Lawrence, with Lawrence Tech and an Adrian loss, the Chippewas secure themselves a... Uh, a third place in the MCHC East. They will need to go on the road and at home here tomorrow night against Lawrence Tech in that weekend series and get some sort of points to overcome that barrier against Adrian and Saginaw Valley State still sitting fifth in the MCHC East. Well, we're going to skip our light lamp portion of this show tonight. St. Andre did have a couple of points, but nonetheless, I mentioned of our keys to the game, Reagan, that you talked about a little bit in the pregame show. The first one was you had them having a fast start. They did that, but it wasn't enough. Yeah, they did have a fast start, but they really couldn't hit my second key to the game, which was keep that momentum rolling. They got the first goal. Heck, they got a 2-1 lead. Heading in, or they, they had a 2-1 lead at one point, and they just crumbled. They couldn't get the offense rolling. They let Michigan get the momentum in their favor, and Michigan turned out to play the play as the better team here tonight and it's a rough loss for the Chippewas and they really needed this game but they couldn't finish it out here at home. Time now for our three stars of the game presented once again by CMHIceHockey.com. Our third star of the night was Andrew Porzondik. A goal and assist tonight. Porzonic was all over the ice, especially in the last seven minutes, trying to make something happen for the Chippewas. Had a couple good chances in front, but to no avail, he does not get a game-winning goal or a game-tying goal. He is our third star tonight with two points on the night. Our second star of the night goes to none other. Except, excuse me. We'll start with our – no, we'll go to our second star uh, officially tonight. <laughs> it was uh, Jacob, Jacob Stewart. Jacob Stewart as the captain for uh, – Wolverines with three points tonight, and um, that does remind me a little bit of uh, our key players to watch. He does get on the board with three points tonight. Um, start with an excellent series so far, and you talk about a Wolverine now that going into the tournament play is going to lead them through a charge of uh, tough opponents coming up for them and probably in tournament play, and we expect Michigan to be one of the teams going deep 
in that MCHC tournament. And for our first star of the game, Reagan, it was none other than Owen DeVries with two goals and one assist on the night. He was phenomenal. Yeah, the Rockford uh, graduate played absolutely phenomenal here tonight. He was all over the ice getting two goals. Both of them were backdoor, and that, that strategy worked all night for Michigan, and that worked all series. They were able to find a loophole in the, in the Central Michigan defense, find those backdoor plays, and get the puck into the net, and it ended up uh, working for them here tonight in their favor, and they knock off the Chippewas at home. That they do, and they split this season series now at one. Michigan lost the first game 4-3 to three in overtime after Brendan Martin was the hero. Martin not getting on the board tonight couldn't be the hero for the Chippewas in this one. As we look ahead for the Chippewas, tomorrow night they will take on Lawrence Tech right here again at home for Martin Ice Arena for a 4 p.m. puck drop. Coverage of that game will begin at 3.35 Eastern time. I will have that call for you. Reagan, you're heading to Cincinnati to cheer on your Bengals in the Super Bowl. Yeah. I'll miss you up in the broadcast booth for the final two games of the season. I look forward to being on the other end of it, though. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, you know what? It's, it's actually nice because uh, – you know, I, I can I can solve myself with the light the lamps and uh, you know I, I sit at the top right now, but I don't have to hear your nonsense of telling me how I'm not very good at picking players. No, I I never said you weren't very good. <laughs> I just said you need a bigger headset and that still stands. Hey, hey that's even worse, folks. I'll tell you that. He, he said it right here. So, nonetheless, looking ahead, they'll take on Lawrence Tech and catch that game on CCHN here for that call. I will have it for you, as well as the next night on the road in Lawrence Tech for the final game of the season as the Chippewas close out this regular season, looking to retain something of a good seating, trying to move up to third place in the MCHC East. And Reagan, our out-of-town scoreboards tonight, we didn't really have a lot of them for you here, but the Red Wings, as I mentioned in the second remission, 6-3 and three on top of the Flyers. They'll take them on tomorrow night in Little Caesars Arena. On Monday, they will take on the Wild. Grand Rapids Griffins are also in action tonight and tomorrow against the Iowa the Wild in Des Moines. <laughs> uh, you can, uh, I believe the game tonight is already over with. It might still be going on. You could always check that on what News Radio, what 1300, 106.9 FM. Bob Kayser has the call both nights, and tomorrow's night, uh, puck drop is at 8 p.m. Our special thanks to our broadcast crew today. It was Emma Samantha working uh, the ones and twos for us here today, as well as Aaron Gemmel. Uh, thanks you, thank you so much to all those. And then uh, Brian Bonkowski, thank you. <laughs> I didn't write that down in the notes, but thank you to all those uh, who made this broadcast go as smoothly as it did. Mac TV as well helped us out with uh, providing us equipment, and then. Uh, now, Kelly's Sports Bar, ah, thank you for showing us here tonight. As well as we'd like to thank our social media team, Joe Rogan as well, Tristan Hagenstein as always, with some excellent photos. You can catch those on Facebook coming up shortly, and Tristan Hagenstein Photography on those socials. Once again, thanks to MHTV personnel as well. Emma Hug coming in tonight, and Emma Samantha coming in to help us with the broadcast. They did a phenomenal job all night, and we thank you for tuning into this edition of Central Michigan Hockey here on CCHN. We'll be back tomorrow night as the Chippewas look to regain some momentum heading into tournament play as they take on the Lawrence Tech Blue Devils in a home-and-home -home series. Thank you again for listening in to this presentation of Central Michigan Hockey here on CCHN. We're good. I forgot to send you.